Dick Enberg with Bob Trumpy. Welcome to Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. The AFC Oakland Raiders, 8-3, first place in the AFC West against the first place Philadelphia Eagles. Ten wins, only one defeat, the leaders in the NFC East. Two teams looking ahead to the playoffs, and this an opportunity to judge just how good they are as they match themselves against great talent, whether it be the Eagles against the Raiders or Dick Vermeil's uh, Eagle defense facing that Oakland Raider offense. Dick, it's a, it's a well-worn phrase, but this is a must-win for both of these football teams. With five games left in the season, this being the uh, 12th game of the season, it applies today. Barr kicks it off for the Oakland Raiders. Eagles... Billy Campfield takes it at the three. Behind the wedge at the 15. Tripp stays on his feet and gets out to the 25-yard line. Derek Ramsey, Willie Jones in on the tackle. Ron Jaworski, they call him Jaws to play off his name. The quarterback number one in the NFL. Wilbert Montgomery, great runner. Leroy Harris is blocker. The receivers, 6'8", Harold Carmichael at consecutive string. An NFL record still in order. Charlie Smith on the other wing. Keith Crepley the tight end. The blockers for Jaworski. Walters and uh, Sizemore, the two tackles, both pro bowlers. Perot and Peoples at guard and Morris, the veteran center. Michael's 124th game in which he has caught a pass as he extends his NFL mark. The Oakland Raiders defense. They'll use a 3-4 and will go into a four-man defensive front whenever uh, it's a pass situation. Dick, in this crucial football game, I would imagine that the Philadelphia Eagles are trying on this a lot of first downs to try to get to be second and two, second and three, because Oakland comes in with that the four two five configuration defense, and it's a big defense for them. Second down and eight at the 27. Crefley and Spagnola, two tight ends in. They're both to the right. yard gain for the ex-Yale star Spagnola, whose team beat Harvard in the big game yesterday. Harold Carmichael ducking his head in the huddle. As we told you, 124 straight games now as he extends his NFL mark. He's to the left. Charlie Smith to the right. Crepley to tight end on the right side. First down at the Philly 45. First play on the ground to Montgomery to the 50. He's on the way to the 46 before Burgess Owens can come up from a safety spot and make the tackle after a nine-yard gain. Defensively for the Oakland Raiders, Matuzak, Kinlaw, the speedy ex-Oklahoma star in the middle, and Browning. Linebackers, the mad stork, Ted Hendricks, having a banner season. The rookie from Penn State, Matt Millen, Randy McClanahan, Rob Martin. Lester Hayes leads the NFL in interceptions with nine and has had three called back. Dwayne Osteen, ex-Ram at the other corner. Mike Davis and Burgess Owens, the safety. Second down and one at the Oakland 46. Play action. Jaworski. Carmichael slipped. It's incomplete down at the 27-yard line as Carmichael fell to the turf. By the time he got up, then Jaworski had defeated out of bounds. Dick, I imagine the Eagles feel very comfortable right now. Last week, uh, they took the ball in the opening drive of the ball game and went 80 yards right down the football field. They've, they're using two tight ends. They have all their weapons today offensively. Wilbert Montgomery last week just played a half and picked up 50 yards, but he's healthy. So the first crucial play of the game, third down and about a half a yard here. Jaworski with help from the sidelines as they signal in the plays. Dick Vermeil, the head coach. Third and one, and now a timeout. There was some confusion. Number 20, Leroy Harris came off the field and then started back on, and apparently then Vermeil said, uh-oh, -uh, we've got a mix-up. No uh, sense in going ahead with a play that had been called. So a timeout by Philadelphia. No score early at the vet. Open up. Finish! And taste. We're just beginning. 
this time, the best I is just an hour. Okay, deserve. let's make it official. You brought out the best? It's on me. It's on us. It's time for Erlanger. One look, one sip, one taste will tell you this beer is a classic. Now we're really in business. Come and taste the moment of Erlanger. Foreign oil. We know the consequences. Higher prices, political instability. So America is working hard to reduce our dependence by increasing the use of our own energy resources. At Westinghouse, we're using our technology to get more energy out of coal. Half minutes gone in the first quarter, no score. Eagles taking the kickoff. Four plays, three of them passes. And Ron Jaworski looks at a third down and one. Referee Jim Tunney talking to the quarterback of the Eagles. Jaworski, very durable sort, has not missed since the Eagles acquired him from the Los Angeles Rams. The Wrights acquired. They then signed him as Charlie Young. His rights were sent to Los Angeles. The Rams picked off the big tight end. Carmichael is the wing right with Spagnola and Crefley bookending the line. Hogan, or rather Harris, and he has the first down as he goes out of bounds at the 43-yard line. Leroy Harris knocked out of bounds by Dwayne Osteen. Harris primarily a blocker, but has chipped in with 257 yards of his own, third on the Eagle rushing list. The weather, mid-40s, a threat of rain, 40%, overcast skies. Boy, they really need rain here. They're talking about water rationing if they don't get some precipitation soon. Dick Vermeil, a handsome 44-year-old coach of the Eagles. What a job he's done, voted by his peers as the top coach in the league last year. First down for Jaworski. Knocked down intercepted by number 57 Randy McClanahan who came flying in a three-year veteran from southwestern Louisiana almost picked off a tough one and the Oakland Raiders feature that in their defense they have very very tall linebackers and Hendricks and McClanahan and all defensive coaches coach all of their players up front that when you make penetration on that offensive line of scrimmage when you realize the quarterback's going to throw the football, get your hands up in the air. And this is the other side of the of the field, but the Philadelphia Eagles have to lead the NFL in deflected passes, passes at the line of scrimmage. And you watch Hayes, and we'll keep our eye on him. He's had a brilliant season. Many feel he's the best quarterback in the NFL at this moment. Second and ten. the Oakland Raiders who picks it up and he has finally stopped whistled dead at about the 27 yard line and now they're going to call it an incomplete pass Whoa. a late call a late call for incomplete pass it was after that picked it up and had been whistled dead before the official came in and said no good and the official who called that was behind Carmichael on the reception I don't blame the Oakland Raiders for being a little bit upset but Jaworski gets good pass protection here as you look at the line of scrimmage and Carmichael on about a 15-yard down and in underneath the zone coverage. And he does have long strides, but I'd, he has possession of the football. He has possession of the football. Jarred loose. Burgess Owens, 44, knocked it away. Matt Millen, 55, picked it up, but it is ruled an incomplete pass. So the Eagles still in possession at the 43-yard line. This is a game, too, Dick. Two very, very good football teams. It's going to be determined by mistakes. The fewer the mistakes, the better chance you have to win. 10. Three wide receivers in now for Philadelphia. Smith. Knocked down at the line of scrimmage again. Ted Hendricks, the linebacker. Bob Trumpy mentioned that Hendricks, very tall, and so is McClanahan. They use their arms well. And a deflected pass by Hendricks. It's fourth and 10. He plays more of a rover back for the Oakland Raiders. And I'm sure there are defensive coordinators around the league who wonder how Oakland can get away with that. Sometimes he's on the left, sometimes on the right. And nobody seems to know where he is all the time. They let Hendricks freelance, and he has a freedom to kind of go where he thinks the ball will be. Max Runniger kicking to Ira Matthews. And out of bounds it goes. They'll mark it down at about the 20-yard line. Inside the 20 at the 17, they say. And our first score from elsewhere, Pittsburgh leads Buffalo 7-0 early at Buffalo. Timeout here in Philadelphia. No score. 12 minutes left for a quarter. Has the pump got you down?
Plymouth breaks through the mileage barrier. A new front-wheel drive Horizon Miser with advanced electronic fuel control soars to the highest highway gasoline mileage rating ever achieved by any American car. And at a price that dips below $5,300. A great price for the car that climbed to the highest mileage rating of any American car. Horizon Miser. Its highs and lows make a lot of sense. At Plymouth, the American way to beat the pump. Wet, sticky, roll-on antiperspirant. They hold you up when you want to get dressed. Get on the stick. Speed Stick Solid Deodorant from Menon gives you dry, effective protection against perspiration odor. Look, roll-ons go on wet. That's why they stick to your shirt. But Speed Stick is solid deodorant, effective protection against odor, so dry that Speed Stick never sticks. And Speed Stick is so much wider than the other leading stick. Takes just a few strokes. So get on the wide stick. Speed Stick Deodorant by Menon. This is Brian Gumble in New York at Rick Stadium in Buffalo. The Steelers are on the board. Joe Ferguson operating deep in his own territory. Picked off by Robin Cole. Cole returns at 34 yards down to the three-yard line. One play later, Franco Harris gets the call, finds room off the right side, and goes in from two yards out. Point after is good, and the Steelers are in front 7-0. Back to the vet, Dick Enberg. No score here in Philadelphia. And one of the... We've got multi-million dollar equipment here. We just used a $10 hacksaw to try to see that window in the left of your screen is in front of the Eagles coaches upstairs. And they've closed it and closed it in front of our cameras. So we're without one of the cameras. And so we're hacksawing our way back to victory. First down for the Raiders at their own 18. That's Van Egan to the 22, maybe the 23-yard line. Dennis Harrison, Bigfoot, number 68, made the tackle. Jim Plunkett, the quarterback, 6-0 and as a starter. Kenny King, great acquisition from the Oilers. And Mark Van Egan, durable back, the all-time rushing leader for the Raiders. Cliff Branch, the speedster. Bob Chandler, the finesse receiver. Raymond Chester, one of the best tight ends ever. And the blockers, Shell and Upshaw, the big veterans on the left side. Dolby in the middle. Marvin, they say, having a great year. And Henry Lawrence on the right side. Run. Second down and six. plastered at the 24-yard line. Bishop set by the Eagles. Jerry Robinson. There's the Eagle line. Dennis Harrison, Charlie Johnson in the middle, and Carl Hairston, the hustling outside defensive end. Backers and good ones. Bunting, Bergie the veteran. LeMaster, another fine veteran. Jerry Robinson, uh, outstanding All-American at UCLA. The defensive backs, rookie Roy Nell Young, a number one draft pick. Herman Edwards, a free agent, but uh, they say an all-pro contender. Randy Logan from Michigan. Raynard Wilson, another free agent at safety. Five defensive backs for the Eagles. It's third and five. Oops, contact, no play. The Eagles jumping offside. Dennis Harrison, 68, made contact. We'll see if he was drawn off. I think you can see the nervousness in both these football teams. They're being very, very conservative so far. The Eagles did throw it on their first possession down the field a little bit, but you don't want to beat yourself in a football game like this. You want to make sure that you make the other team make mistakes to lose the football game. In coach with number 68, defense, first down. Five-yard penalty gives the Raiders a first down out across the 28-yard line. Other scores, the Bears on a Walter Payton one-yard run lead at Atlanta. After four minutes of play, and Tampa Bay has kicked a 24-yard field goal, your premium, to give them a 3-0 lead against the Lions down in Florida. Here, no score. Ten and a half minutes remaining in this first quarter. Plunkett. To Cliff Branch complete at the 44-yard line. The speedy branch from Colorado, 9-3 speed. And despite the fact he's now 32, he still may be the fastest receiver in the NFL. And a good timing pass from Plunkett, too. That's, you can hear the hacksaw in the background. That's the star of the show if we get the window out here. But good pass protection, although Harrison up the middle, and that's a fine catch for a first down. And the Oakland Raiders are moving right down the field. If we're ever incarcerated, we ought to bring that fellow along with us, hacking his way to victory. <laughs> we're going to get that camera working yet. First down for Oakland at the 43-yard line. Van Egan right into the arms of Jerry Robinson at the 45-yard line. Robinson, you saw last week, many of you, take a 59-yard 
fumble uh, recovery to a touchdown against the Washington Redskins. He was a number one pick by Vermeil who lusted for him. He, of course, recruited him back at UCLA a few years back. He is another one of those new generation linebackers, Vic, that plays at about 220, maybe 225 pounds. Very, very active. Can cover pass receivers. And that time he took on Kenny King, stood him straight up and stopped Van Egan. Second down nine at the 45. only about two yards out of it to the 47 yard line and we now have that window removed from our booth and we'll be able to use our high camera Kenny King who reeled off the longest run of this season 89 yard touchdown against San Diego watch Jerry Robinson number 56 here he was recruited by Dick Vermeule to go to UCLA and he was recruited as a receiver and a running back but as is true with a lot of coaches they feel they put their best athletes on the defense Kenny King had the end fortunate history to play behind Billy Sims at Oklahoma and be drafted by the Houston Oilers and line up behind Earl Campbell. Finally gets a chance in Oakland. And he's made a great contribution to the Oakland success. Third and long at the 47. Plunkett. Scrambling. Just gets it away to Chester. And it's a first down at the 33 of the Eagles. And Plunkett just did get it away before Claude Humphrey, the veteran from Tennessee State, was on his back. Humphrey with 10 sacks, the leader of the Eagles. Good mobility by Plunkett here, who has been around since 1970. You'll see him avoid the pass rush, and they still gets the ball down. Oh, if he only had eyes in the back of his head, he probably would have hit the ground. But Chester, a veteran receiver, knows that when that quarterback is rushing, is being rushed, get open. Look at Claude Humphrey. He is a real specialist. You know, Dick, he told me before the football game, he's never enjoyed two years more than he's enjoyed the last two years here in Philadelphia. Well, he's played like he's a happy man. First down at the 33, the Raiders' deepest penetration. We're in the first quarter. Quick out to Brad. Incomplete at the 30. There to cover Jerry Robinson and Herman Edwards. Good job by Plunkett there. I think he saw the cornerback coming up. He threw the ball into the ground to avoid the interception. That's unusual to see Branch covered by two men on a quick out. Normally you save your double coverage when you see Cliff go deep. Uh, this is this Philadelphia Eagle football team is an excellent, excellent defense. They are young. They are also not very many high round draft choices and they play with a great deal of intensity and that comes straight from Dick Vermeil. And we'll show you that first round draft picks they have probably less than any team in the NFL and yet are the winningest team. Plunkett on second and ten lots of time to Chester great catch and out of bounds at the ten yard line. Well Chester using all of his 6-4 reach to spear that one before going out of bounds as Oakland drives deep. That's one of the little adjustments that Oakland has obviously made in their offense. They are not a sprint out offense, but to get away from the pass rush of the Philadelphia Eagles to give Plunkett a little more time to throw the football. He rolls right and Chester makes a fine, fine catch. He's been troubled with bad knees for the last two or three years, but has certainly been a valuable acquisition for the Oakland Raiders for the second time. That's right. He was traded to Baltimore for Bubba Smith, and then they got him right back from Baltimore for Mike Ciani. First down. They can get a first down without a touchdown. This is King. Good pursuit by the Eagles, as King appeared to have some room outside, but it was closed off by Brainard Wilson, number 22. Free agent pick from Vanderbilt. Ran him out of bounds. That's an impressive stat right there on the screen. And a 34 defense, which was originally brought into the game to stop the pass game, has turned out to be one of the best rushing defenses there is. Great pursuit out of the people on the offside. Arthur Whittington, 22, into the backfield for Oakland. And in comes Claude Humphrey, the pass rusher supreme for the Eagles on second and nine at the nine. It is a pass. Chester fumble fumble and it's recovered by Robinson of Philadelphia Jerry Robinson picks up the ball not unlike the fumble that was called an incomplete pass earlier in this quarter well, I don't think this one is any different than the one in the first quarter but a good catch by Chester obviously going to feature the tight end 
You see him catch it. And possession, no question it was a fumble. Recovered by Robinson and will return in a moment. Just in time for Christmas. Save $10 each on two favorite Radio Shack electronic games. Two-player football or two-player baseball. Both cut to $29.95 each. Computerized action games with separate controls for each player. Write a scoreboard with built-in sound. Challenge a friend or play against the computer. Pitch a no-hitter. Score a touchdown. Be a winner and pocket the savings. Save price two-player electronic games. Only at Radio Shack, your Christmas electronic store. Throughout brewing history, there have been few beers so exceptional they stand in a class by themselves. For it's a rare moment when both the finest ingredients and the skill of the brewer come together. Such a moment has been captured in Erlanger. One look, one sip, one taste will tell you this is a classic. Come and taste the moment This is Brian Gumbel in New York at Shea Stadium. The Jets have moved ahead of the Oilers. Stabler looking for Casper instead. He finds Ken Schroy, seventh interception of the year for Schroy. He takes it 82 yards down the sideline, untouched, point after his good, and the Jets have moved ahead of the Oilers by a score of 7-0. Back to the vet and Dick Enberg. All right, Brian. Yes, sir. That's had to be exciting for the Jets fans. And when you're an underdog and can turn it over and get a touchdown, that can sometimes really switch the momentum of a game. There's the fumble as Casper hit by Herman Edwards and Jerry Robinson recovering for Philadelphia to stop a 10-play Oakland drive. First down, Eagles at their five-yard line. Robert Montgomery gets a couple off that left side. Plenty of white shirts, McClanahan, Ken Law, Martin all in on the play, along with Matt Millen, the fine young rookie linebacker. If I may go back to that play and just make a comment, Jerry Robinson did a great job of keeping the ball in bounds. If the ball goes out of bounds, it's Oakland's ball, first and ten on about the four-yard line. He did a, a, a doubly great job on that play. Robinson, quite a ball hawk. Second and seven. Smith right, Carmichael left. Big split of the receivers. They're almost sideline to sideline. Safety blitz. They give it to Montgomery. He's out across the 10 to the 12-yard line. Short of the first down, it'll be third and three. Dave Browning spearheaded the defensive charge for the Raiders. The Eagles have accomplished one thing so far in this football game, Dick, with 7.20 to go in the first quarter. They have kept that four-man defensive line of the Oakland Raiders off the field. And it still has not come off the field. Now in a third down and about four situation. That's a big part of Oakland's defense. And the Eagles have got to feel very, very good about keeping that defense off the field. The Raider pass defense has been outstanding. They lead the NFL in interceptions. And Oakland is second in the NFL in sacks with 39, just a couple behind San Diego. Third and a long three. Montgomery, first down at the 18-yard line. Mike Davis made the tackle. First and 10, Philadelphia. Montgomery, a big rushing year last season, but he's missed four games this year, and that accounts for the fact he has but 514 yards. He was one of the all-time steals in the draft, too. A number six in 1977, and the reason he was such a late-round draft choice is that he had a huge calcium deposit on his thigh, and nobody wanted to take a chance with him. He spent the bigger part of the first year just returning kickoffs, and in the first game he started, ran for 103 yards, and since then he's been their starting running back. First down, Eagles, no score. Six minutes left in the first quarter. From the 18, Jaworski off play action. He hit incomplete for 84 Crefley, and you could hear the pop as Jaworski was nailed by Dave Browning, whose University of Washington team will be in the Rose Bowl against Michigan. You'll see that right here in NBC. He is not known as the pass rusher either on that side for the Oakland Raiders. Normally, they bring in another man to get to the quarterback, and he's in the ball game right now. Cedric Hardman, number 86. Hardman. Very much like Claude Humphrey. It's an interesting story that here are two teams with two veteran pass rushers, now designated rushers, Hardman for Oakland and Claude Humphrey, the former Atlanta Falcon, working in that capacity for Philadelphia. Second and 10, Jaworski is only two of seven throwing. Hardman's got him, and so does Matuzak, but it was Hardman there first. 
and the twos finished him off. That's exactly what the Eagles wanted to avoid, to get in that long yardage situation. You see Hardman on number 75 and all. Oh, they ran a stunt. Aha, uh -huh. they got tricky. 75 is Stan Walters, and you see the value of Ted Hendricks. He took on Walters, and then it was Wilbert Montgomery on Cedric Hardman. That's a mismatch. And Hardman walked right around uh, Montgomery's hesitation. So the sack for Oakland, the first today and the 40th this season, brings up third and long. And now you've got Willie Jones, 90, along with Hardman, 86, and a four-man front for the Raiders as Matuzak and Browning move inside a tackle. by Mike Davis, number 36 at the 30-yard line, and Davis appeared to injure a, a wrist or a shoulder as he went up for that one, and just trying to catch the ball. So the Eagles come out, punting team in, and drifting back will be Ira Matthews to get Max Runniger's punt. Matthews standing at the 50-yard line. Runniger, although only a 39-yard average, a tremendous net, they don't return many on him. For Oakland. Here they come. Dylan just missed. Matthews at the 48. 50. 40. And to the 32 yard line. That's a rarity for the Eagles to see a man take one back 20 yards, but Matthews, who was brilliant. As a punt return and kick return man at Wisconsin continues in that role as an Oakland Raider. That's one of the things the Raiders are most proud of, too. Their special teams, they very seldom allow any type of, type of yardage. And yes, that is close to a block. And I imagine Mr. Vermeil will be all over his punt coverage team. Robinson there, he gets juked out. Man, that's a good return. John Shar was downfield, couldn't get Matthews. So it's first down Oakland at the 32-yard line. Late in the first quarter, five minutes left. Plunkett going deep. Chandler. Oh, what a play by Roynell Young. Chandler had a touchdown, but Young at the last minute knocked it away. He's the young man who has been picked on for this entire season. Interesting. He was a first-round draft choice in the NFL this year, and he was only recruited by one college, that Alcorn State, when he came out of high school. But this is a great play by a young man. The Eagles are very high on this kid. Good reaction time, and that's making up a lot of ground. Ooh, close. Chandler left empty-handed when he thought he had six. It's second and ten at the 32. King split behind Plunkett. Van Egan. And the draw takes him down close to the 26-yard line in the arms of Ken Clark. Number 71, Van Egan, having another solid season. Mickey Marvin was the man who cleared the way for him. Marvin from Tennessee playing the right guard. Third and five. And now the situation substitution for the Philadelphia Eagles. They come in with four defensive linemen and five defensive backs. Awful lot of players on these two teams get on the field. It's a new era, the situation substitution. Is it not defensively? Yes, it is. Yeah. Well, with the new pass rules, I think for the offense, you almost have to put more people out there defensively. Morris Bradshaw, third wide receiver in for Oakland. Plunkett to Chan. Same coverage. And Roy Nell Young is 2-0 against Bob Chandler. Apparently, Oakland will try a long field goal because Chris Barr is on the field. The older brother of the Steelers, Matt. There he is from Penn State. And he's towing the 45-yard line, 35-yard line, which will make it a 45-yard kick. His longest this year is 48. Bob Chandler to hold. Bar and the Raiders 
Chiefs are denied, and the Eagle fans are happy. Time out. 3.56 left. Scoreless first quarter. It's knowing you depend on us. We're going to solve your problem. Market rich did even Buffalo. Joe Ferguson has brought the Bills even with the Steelers up top. 15th touchdown pass of the year for Ferguson. The arms of Jerry Butler play for 29 yards. It's 7 all in the first. Back to Philly. Dick Enberg and Bob Trumpy. No score here in Philadelphia. Less than four minutes remaining. First quarter, Dick Vermeil. What an interesting path he has taken to the top of his profession. He was... The quarterback coach at Stanford when Jim Plunkett was a sophomore. Worked for the Rams, head coach UCLA. Colbert Montgomery out to the 33-yard line. John Matuzak able to get down low and trip him up. Great acceleration by this young guy. About seven weeks ago, he had a hip pointer against Dallas, tried to play the week after, and then came up with a knee injury. And for the last five weeks, they basically play without Wilbur Montgomery and won every game. That's a tremendous psychological lift to this football team. He is their meal ticket. Last year accounted for almost 2,000 yards in total offense, 1,500 running and 500 catching. They win without it. In fact, he led the NFL in offensive production last year with over 2,000 yards. Dwayne Osteen in front of Harold Carmichael, and it was Browning right on the number seven of Jaworski. He's been under heat. And that's an interesting matchup, Osteen on Carmichael, because Osteen is replacing Monty Jackson. He has trouble with his knee, but this is almost an interception, and it looks like they're playing man-to-man -man underneath short and zone on top for Oakland. They're going to give them the short ones, but they don't want to give up those 15-yard receptions to the Eagles. You know, Osteen's an interesting story. He's playing the right corner. Herman Edwards, the right corner for Philadelphia. They were college roommates, both at California as a freshman. Osteen transferred to San Jose State. Edwards went to San Diego State. Now they meet as NFL opponents playing the same spot. Third and five. Three wide receivers in for the Eagles. Out of the backfield. this guy is Wilbert Montgomery and if Ron Jaworski that's his 28th pass reception Wilbert Montgomery of the season and this is what is happening in the NFL you throw it out to a running back and hope that he breaks a tackle or two and he gets a first down for him so it's first down Philadelphia at the Eagle 42 yard line two and a half minutes left in the first quarter no score Oakland has missed a 45 yard field goal try Field and now they shift back. Harris, number 20. It is Harris waiting for it was 53, Rod Martin. And it's Harris held to about a two-yard gain. Harris from Arkansas State. So is Bill Berge, the star on defense for the Eagles. And one of the things you see also in the NFL a lot nowadays, Dick, is the wigwag from the sideline. You have three guys standing there wigwagging signals into Ron Jaworski, the quarterback. That is their message system. Well, actually, they had a number 88 Spagnola came in with a play, and there you see the man with the wigwag. Looks like a third base coach, doesn't he? Lynn Stiles in the yellow jacket, so he's easy to spot the quarterback. Dick Vermeil and Joe Pasarczyk, the backup quarterback, all involved in that signal system. the 40-yard line. They were trying to hit Carmichael, and that Raider defense appeared to have about six white jerseys surrounding Carmichael. Playing a total zone, and that appears to be their game plan for the day. McClanahan was, I couldn't tell if he got his hand on the ball. We have it on replay. You judge for yourself. Carmichael's behind him, makes a good move to the ball. Uh, can't quite see it, but Carmichael, let's say probably the ball was tipped because he does have a a great set of hands and he has good concentration on the football. He wouldn't normally drop a pass like that if it was an uninterrupted flight. So it's third and eight. McClanahan out as Oakland goes to the four down linemen. That means Jones and Hartman are on the outside.
yards on the play. The flag was thrown in the backfield of the Eagles. I think they got Rod Parker going towards the line of scrimmage, Dick. That's right. Motion against Philadelphia. Rodney Parker from Tennessee State. Yeah, that's too bad. That was a big play. And that's what you want to try to do. I repeat, these are here's the call. Illegal motion, offense, two backs were moving. Still third down. Two backs in motion. That may work in the Canadian Football League, but not down here. Not here. What I was about to say is you really don't want to beat yourself in a game like this. These are two very tough football teams, and they're going to be determined by the breaks that each team gets for themselves. You don't want to give the ball up to your opponent. You want to play very, very conservative football and not give them a break, any momentum. And Oakland has caught up the ball at the Philadelphia 5, and then missed a field goal. No score. Third and 13. Blitz. And they got him. 73, Dave Browning tosses Jaworski at the 30-yard line. His second sack of the game. He's not known as an outstanding pass rusher. But I guess the focus has been on the others, and that's Freed Browning. That's the 41st sack of the year for the Oakland Raiders. And you can see, apparently, Browning is inside on Petey Perot, the offensive left guard of the Eagles. Good against the run, still learning how to pass rush, so they may have to make some compensation for him. Runniger will kick from around his own 20. Matthew stands at the 30 of Oakland. at the 23-yard line, and right there was John Shara of the Eagles. No score here in Philadelphia. Let's go to New York and Brian Gumbel. Thank you, Dick Enberg. Out at Shea Stadium, the Oilers have been playing listless ball. They trail the Jets 14-0. They've needed a spark. This may be it. Carl Roaches takes the kickoff at his own two-yard line, takes it back 45 yards to the 47. Oiler offense in business, but trailing 14-0. Let's go back to the vet. Dick Enberg. Oh, my, Bryant. I'm sure you'll keep us uh, well in tune on that game. That could be the upset of this National Football League season. The Jets in front by two touchdowns over the favored Oilers. Here, no score. 23-yard line, Jim Plunkett to Kenny King. John Bunting, number 95, and on the tackle for the Eagles. Let's run down all the scores for you. The early action today in the NFL. Okay. As Merlin Olson said a couple of weeks ago, well, let's just amble down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> Baltimore trailing New England in the second quarter, 7-0. It's 14-0 Jets leading Houston first quarter. Cincinnati, 7. Cleveland, nothing. A bit of a surprise there in the second quarter. Chicago, 7-0 lead against Atlanta first period. And 10-0 now Tampa Bay over the Lions in the second quarter. Pass. Here, no score. Whoa. track run and pass Bob Trump he's been calling the plays when Oakland has the ball he's been right the first three times he thinks he has a key and we're going to try it a few more times Bob then you can tell us what you think they're doing to tip it off that's the first time it really didn't work and I, I got a bad angle at the man that I'm looking at but he fooled me that time we'll inform him later as to what we're doing here okay so much like a hitter picking up maybe a tip from a pitcher that tells him whether it's fastball or curveball Mr. Trumpy has a a key that he's watching, and he thinks it'll tell us whether Oakland's running or passing. Final seconds, and there's the gun end of the first quarter. As you see an update, Cleveland has scored to tie Cincinnati. Here in Philadelphia, the vet, over 70,000 fans have seen the Eagles. And the Raiders, two teams on winning skeins, play 15 minutes to a scoreless tie. Picking and choosing the right investments requires very careful handling. One wrong move can easily damage the best laid plans. At Merrill Lynch, we know... In Philadelphia, for all their professional enterprises, winning for the Birds, winning for the Flyers, for the world champion Phillies, and right on down the line, 10-1, and one, the Eagles. First quarter statistics, the Raiders with the edge, but no scores. They fumbled at the Philadelphia 5 and then missed a field goal. Complete to Chandler, 45, 50, 
Shara hits him, stays on his feet, and Chandler to the 47. So a big play on third down as Jim Plunkett rifles it to Bob Chandler, who acquired from the Buffalo Bills in the offseason a 29-yard play. One of the best pattern runners there is in the business, too, Dick. Very, very consistent. The quarterback knows where he is. You'll see at the bottom of the line, we're going to miss it. Roy Nell Young slipped and fell down. It's very slippery on this side of the field. Also, the experience of Plunkett stepping up in the pocket. And you'll see Roy Nell Young getting up off the ground. Yes, in pursuit. But nevertheless, 29 yards and a first down. Oakland at the 47 and a half of the Eagles. Run. And it is a run. Van Egan up the middle to the 49 yard line. We're going to ask you what tip you're using, Bob Trumpy, when we come back. But right now, let's go to New York. NFL lady and Brian Gumbel. Thank you, Dick. At Cleveland's Municipal Stadium, the Browns are on the board. This is Reggie Rucker working against Ken Riley. Riley picked off by his own man, allowing Rucker to catch a 16-yard touchdown pass from Brian Seif. Just like that, the Browns have caught the Bengals at 7 in the second. Let's go back to the vet. And here in Philadelphia, no score. All right, what is your tip, Bob Trumpy? Okay, coaches look for days on in at film, and all they're looking for is a slight advantage somewhere. My key today is Art Shell, number 78, the offensive left tackle of the Raiders. All throw, but it appears that when they're going to pass the ball, he is way back off the line of scrimmage. I'll say now it's a pass. Whoops, he fooled me. <laughs> I was going to say, it looked like he was on the line of scrimmage to me. I Let's looked, watch Shell. Eh? Yeah. I looked quick, and I think the people out there might be able to pick it up, too, that when it is obviously a pass, he is back off the line of scrimmage to give him that split second more to set up for the pass rush. And when he's on the line of scrimmage, then he's right up on the line of scrimmage to get to that defensive end quickly. You see if you can judge pass or run. Now, I thought it was going to be a run based on what you said because it appeared he was right up there even with Upshaw. It's pretty obvious in, in most situations. And the... You know, it's now third down and six, and you'd say they're probably going to pass, but if you know on first down, the defensive the lineman key. can put their ears back and rush the quarterback. Well, let's watch Shell to see if he lines up a little farther back. It's third down and five. That's fast. You can see he's like a half foot behind the other man. Plunkett in trouble. And now has running room. 40, 35, and down at the 32 with the first down. Plunkett showing great poise and there's the whole re emotional rehabilitation of Jim Plunkett. There was a time where he was so beaten up he didn't know which way to turn. Now he waits patient patient and then there you see Shell lined up back of 63 his uh, left guard Upshaw and indeed a pass that becomes a run. Yeah you're right when, when you talk about Jim Plunkett the fact that he there aren't many teams in the NFL that would pick up a guy on waivers and then let him sit for a year to try to get some emotional stability back in him. That's exactly what Al Davis did for Jim Plunkett. He's been accused, Al Davis, of many, many things. But Re Reclamation Project is one of them. Pass. First down pass. It is a pass. Plunkett. Incomplete. Well covered was Cliff Branch as LeMaster and Berge had him down at the 15-yard line. And now there's the key on a first down to know whether you're running or passing. And you heard Bob Trumpy call it. It'll be something we're not going to continue ourselves, but you might want to play that game as it develops here in Philadelphia. Exactly. And when you're out there watching, it's more interesting, I think, when you can get involved in a football game. Look at Upshaw and Shell. Those two guys have been in tandem now for 13 years. Two of the best there is in the business, along with Dave Dalby. Only the Oakland Raiders' second center. Their first is in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, he played 210 straight games, and Dalby has played in 127 straight. So you're a center of the Raiders. You're a center for a decade. Second and ten. Ken Clark, 71, got Plunkett with help from Claude Humphrey. Yes, here you see Humphrey, and he comes all the way on the inside on a stunt, comes all the way around. That's a guy who is about 36 or 37 years old. I Let's mean, he see can... the again. Maybe you can explain what just what they did on that play, Bob. Well, Humphrey was lined up on the outside, and the two defensive tackles come outside somewhat, and he goes inside. And basically what he's trying to do is pick himself or Lawrence off on one of his own offensive linemen. It worked in that situation.
they've dodged two bullets now, and I will tell you this, Jim Plunkett had Ray Chester wide open about 15 yards down the field. I think he made a mistake in judgment here going for it all. There's Four Chester. Four minutes gone in the second quarter, no score. When I was picked off for the first time today, Brainerd Wilson with his fifth interception to lead the Eagles on the right. So Philadelphia's top three Oakland drives, no score. hit coming up from the secondary by Mike Davis from Colorado. Oh my. Solid hit. 6'3", 200 pounds and he is a tough tackler. He was the number two choice in 1977. Tampa Bay's lead is cut to 10-7 as the Lions have scored down in Florida. That's a key game. Detroit trying to untrack itself after the great start. Tampa Bay got up to early 10-0 jump. Chicago's Bears leading at Atlanta 10-7. Wow. Philadelphia now with two tight ends in the ball game. They have a good passing set off this formation, Dick. That Atlanta score of great interest to the fans of the Rams watching in Los Angeles today. Second and eight. Carmichael hit immediately by Dwayne Osteen with help from Rod Martin. That'll be short of the first down at the 27 and bring up third down and three. You know, he's got to be a tough receiver to cover. I have never played defense in my life, but a guy with with, with his size, his speed is deceptive because he eats up about four yards per per stride, and you really can't tell how fast he's moving. He was also a basketball player, Carmichael, at Southern University. And we said, is that where you got those nice light feet for such a big man? He said, no, I've always loved to dance. He said, and I've never taken lessons, but I, he thinks that dancing has given him happy feet, as he calls them. And he is light on his feet for a big man. True, he's got to be a real sight on the disco floor at 6'8". <laughs> you wouldn't miss it. for Charlie Smith at the 37 yard line well covered by Lester Hayes and the Eagles will have to give it up on the punt they also have to come up with game plan number two what they're doing so far through uh, a quarter and almost a half is very very little they got to come up with something else here in a hurry against the team Oakland that has the reputation of being an excellent second half team Oakland has been outscored this year total scoring in the first half but they really stormed in the second half themselves Matthews at the 33 Runniger will kick it from around the 18 short Matthews at the 38 the 40 and to the 45 yard line tackled by Jerry Robinson number 56 the linebacker he seems to be uh, a better kicker when he's pressured Dick indeed 35 yard kick eight yard return still no score in Philadelphia well the more amazing as you look at that statistic for the Raiders is they have lost only once in the last 22 games against the NFC that's amazing something magical about that in there and Monday night for Oakland Raiders against the NFC Eagles. Chester's offside. And the give to King. And he plows to the 50-yard line. It'll be second and five. Say, fans, next Saturday on NBC Sports World, 4 o'clock Eastern time, some of America's very best gymnasts, including Tracy Talavera, Marsha Frederick, Juliana McNamara, they'll be competing from China, U.S.-China Gymnastics Competition. And some of our nation's strongest men gather for the U.S. Powerlifting Championships, plus final round action, Legends of Bowling. That's all next Saturday right here on NBC Sports World. Ball just shy of the 50. Jim Plunkett sets him up second and five. King again the other way behind a block by Van Egan. And it'll be close to a first down at the Eagle 45. And what a block by Van Egan on the corner. And that's somewhat unusual, too, because the Oakland Raiders for years with Hubert Dixon, with Mark Van Egan, with, with uh, who's the guy that I'm missing that was just there a couple of years ago? The, Marv Hubbard. It has always been a fullback-oriented offense, and now they got Kenny King in the backfield. Van Egan turn, turns out to be an excellent blocker. 
And Van Egan's block frees King for five yards and a first down just inside the Eagle 45. The Eagles have punted four times. Oakland has not punted. They've been stopped on an interception, a fumble, and a missed field goal. No score. Plunkett to Chandler. Incomplete at the 25. A little touch pass by Plunkett. He tried to drop it into the zone just a little long. A double rotation zone. Corners up, safeties out, and they're trying to hit the seam in it. Didn't quite get it, but it does take a good touch on the ball. I'll tell you what, Oakland has really won the field position battle so far in his football game, and I don't know how long Philadelphia can avoid a touchdown by the Oakland Raiders with this kind of field position. There's the statistic we gave you earlier, as the Raiders have been outscored in the first half totally this year, and yet here they are, six wins in a row, and eight and three on the season. That means they play well in the second half. I think we got a flag too, Dick. Yes. And it's holding against the Raiders. But with that sack, undoubtedly the Eagles will take the loss and loss it down. Illegal use of the hands. Number 70 offense declined. Third down. Henry Lawrence guilty. Declined. It'll be third down and long. That is the man on Claude Humphrey too, Dick. And Plunkett, good uh, coverage downfield by the Eagles. And finally, <laughs> the arm of the law, Humphrey with the right hand. Elsewhere, second quarter, the Lions with back-to-back -to -back touchdowns, a 22-yard run by sensational Billy Sims, and Detroit's ahead 14-10. pressure on Plunkett. That is a good job too by the by the Eagles. Dennis Harrison, big guy, very big guy, six foot eight, 280 pounds, but he looks like a running back right there, running down the quarterback. <laughs> and when you go down in his hands, you go down. Throw him down like a rag doll. All he had was his jersey. And Plunkett is not one of your small quarterbacks. So Ray Guy, the top kicker in the AFC, second in the NFL to Dave Jennings of the Giants, will kick it to John Shara. He's at the 23. First punt of the day for the Oakland Raiders, too. Not a good kick. Shara at the 33, 35, 39. Downfield was 31, Derek Jensen. And Jeff Barnes. Time out. Midpoint of the second quarter. Oakland, Philadelphia. No score. Is the pump pick? The second... And the fourth quarters have been the Eagles' best all season long. They're scoreless against Oakland. Halfway through the second quarter, first down at the 38 for Jaworski, off to a slow start. Out of the eye, Montgomery. Chase and knocked down after a yard gain at the 39 yard line. Rod Martin, 53. Shut off the inside, forced Montgomery wide, and Dave Browning there to make the tackle, number 73. Dick, I think this is the series for the Philadelphia Eagles right here. They got to get the ball down the end zone, down the field. They can't keep playing this minus field position game with Oakland and expect to win the football game. They got to kind of air it out right here, get some of those uh, cornerbacks back off the line of scrimmage. They're playing it about three yards deep. Call it second and ten, as Montgomery really didn't make much on that first down carry. Michael left, Smith to the right, tight end, Crepley, right side. Swing it to Montgomery, good move, and he's down at the 44 as McClanahan, 57, made a good tackle moving laterally. Let's pause briefly for station identification. From Philadelphia, this is the NBC Television Network. This is Channel 4, KRON-TV, San Francisco. 
On a gray day in Philadelphia, Dick Hamburg and Bob Trumpy, the Raiders and the Eagles, two teams on a hot streak. Oakland, six wins in a row. Philadelphia, seven in a row. And the best record in the NFL, ten wins and only one loss. They're scoreless with 6.48 left in the first half. The Eagles ball, 44-yard line, third and five. Davis made a solid tackle and I believe denied the first down. That's the kind of hit that reminds you of Ken Houston in his prime when he used to stop ball carriers and receivers dead cold. Well, when he played against me, he was always in his prime. I don't know that he ever lost a step. This is a great play by Davis. Once again, that four-man rush from Oakland, two linebackers and five defensive backs, man-on-man -man coverage, Davis against Montgomery, and that's a stopper. And he's not, a, he's not an easy guy to stop either. If Montgomery falls forward, it's a first down. He does not, and it's fourth and one. Ira Matthews will drift back for a runner's kick. Matthews inside his 15. Runner aiming it to the near sidelines. And out of bounds. Not a very good kick at the 26-yard line. Runner not at all happy with it time has been called just a 26 yard kick for the Eagles 546 left in a scoreless first half if you're ready to move up to a middle Dumble in New York at Rich Stadium in Buffalo the Bills have been gone out in front of the Steelers Joe Ferguson great catch by Jerry Butler down to the 10 from there the same combination does the rest second time it's worked today 16th touchdown pass of the year for Ferguson Bills run in front 14-7 in the second back to the vet Dick Enberg and Bob Trump No score in Philadelphia with 5.46 left in the first half. The Raiders ball at the 25 and a half. Jim Plunkett has Kenny King, Mark Van Egan behind him. Branch, Bob Chandler to the right. The tight end is Chester on the left. Van Egan burrows his way out close to the 28-yard line. Charlie Johnson, 65, with a tackle. Well, next Thursday, 3.30 Eastern time, we hope you'll join us on Thanksgiving Day. I'll be with Merlin Olson in Dallas. Brian Gumbel will be in New York to bring you the inside look at the day's game. Cowboys and Seattle Seahawks, plus a special look. You'd know Brian would have this at the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders and Seattle kicker Efren Herrera. Heritage of Thanksgiving games of the past also included, so join us for the holiday, 3.30 Eastern time, this coming Thursday. or was it 65? Yes, 65. Charlie Johnson. Along with Claude Humphrey. He was in there to grab a foot, too. He's eating up Henry Lawrence right here. You see Lawrence take him off the line of scrimmage. And he gets around. Look at the agility. Look at the agility to get to that quarterback. I'm telling you, they are the hybrids of professional football. Those guys, he weighs 255 pounds and looks like he weighs about, plays like he weighs about 160. Eagles now with 31 sacks for the year, and you have to credit that one to Humphrey. He's the one that was there first. It is now third. Call it 13. Offensive coaches teach their receivers that when the quarterback rolls your way, you come back to him. You run to his sideline. There were no receivers there for Jim Plunkett to throw the ball to. Branch was the only one who came back to the quarterback. And he was running more toward the sidelines. He wasn't coming directly back. You got to come straight back at the quarterback to give him an outlet, or he's going to get he's going to get stomped back there. Well, do any uh, fans know that pattern? It's the Rainer fans. How many times did they see Boletnikov come back and get that ball? Raymond Guy had a poor kick for him, 36 yards, his first attempt. John Chara is back at the Eagle 38. Ooh, almost over Guy's head, and look at that kick. Very, very high. Chara at the 34, and right into the arms of Otis McKinney. Number 23. Guy almost kicked that one roof high. What a weapon he is, too. Every team that the Oakland Raiders play must account for this guy. They got to put their, their punt receiver back about 10 more yards. 
Plus, he can run with the ball. Last Monday night against the Seattle Seahawks, got a very, very important first down for the Raiders. Run and how about throw the ball? Well, this telecast presented by authority of the National Football League, intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Philadelphia Eagles and the National Football League is prohibited. No score. Four minutes left. First half. Eagles start from their own 33. And Smith in motion. Jaworski to Montgomery up the middle to the 38-yard line. And a gain of about five. Other National Football League scores and highlights at halftime. But an update now in the second quarter. New England now leading 10-0. A 22-yard field goal by John Smith after Calhoun had run for a touchdown. Chicago trailing Atlanta 14-10. Over at Andrews, a four-yard touchdown run for the Falcons. And Buffalo leads Pittsburgh 14-7. Jerry Butler has scored on a 10-yard pass to give Buffalo a touchdown lead against the Steelers. Second and five. First down out at the 42-yard line, 62. Reggie Kinlaw, the Raiders, made the initial hit. Dick, the Philadelphia Eagles have only got four first downs in this first half, and all four of them came in the first quarter. They've yet to get one in the second quarter. Here's the old man on that offensive line, 37-year-old Woody Peoples. Well, we'll give him a plus on that, that one, but still, it's now third down in the yard and a half to go for the Eagles' first First down in the second quarter. Peoples uh, can tell you about his nine years protecting our colleague John Brody as uh, a guard <laughs> with the 49ers, and he did a good job. John often got through a game without getting his jersey dirty. Also spent two years in the Army. He's a really traveled young man. Third and one. Montgomery again. Oh, a fake. And incomplete. As Jaworski went to Carmichael, well covered by Osteen, and they certainly faked me. I thought Montgomery had the ball. And Osteen has kind of done a good job. This is his first start ever at cornerback for the Oakland Raiders. He's replacing Monty Jackson, but this is uh, faked our cameraman, too, and that's not easy to do. But he threw it over the wrong shoulder, it appeared, and I believe he threw it over the wrong shoulder to avoid the interception. Well, I'm not sure. That's a mistake by Jaworski. Runniger, a good kick. Ira Matthews to his 10. to the 22, maybe the 23-yard line. Going back to that fake, uh, it was so beautifully executed by Jaworski and Montgomery, you have to give Osteen great credit. He was on his read and had Carmichael all the way. I think I wonder if maybe I just throw this out to you, possibly. Is the fact that Wilbur Montgomery is back in the lineup and they played for about the last five weeks without him, is it had an effect on the open, on, on the Philadelphia Eagles offense? They feel like they got their meal ticket back there, and are they doing things different? That's a good question. Uh, it may just be that the Eagles are playing an outstanding defense in the Oakland Raiders, and it obviously has been just that, a defensive game in this first half. Raiders having a couple of chances, intercepted in the end zone. They also fumbled at the Eagle 5 and missed a field goal. Scrimmage by you know who, Claude Humphrey. Dick, last week the Philadelphia Eagles had eight passes deflected at the line of scrimmage. And when they don't get to the quarterback, obviously they just stand there with their hands up. I like that guy. He rung my bell about five or six times in the ten years that I played, but he was a fair player. And when he came at you, duck. You talked about reclamation or restoration projects. Well, Humphrey himself likes to restore old cars. He has a 56 Cadillac he's very proud of. Well, he's playing like uh, he found the fountain of youth. In his 13th year as the number one pick of the Falcons back in 68. Second and 10. Out he goes. Ken Clark, 71, gets the sack this time. No receiver open downfield either. Once again, that half roll by the Oakland Raiders. Something new in their offense. Trying to get away from that pass rush. I think that's the fourth sack of the day that the Raider, that the Eagles have had and one pass deflected at the line of scrimmage. Is it the fifth sack? Fifth sack of the day. But four sacks and one batted pass out of the last seven plays, so Plunkett has to be talking to himself as he goes back into that huddle. Third and 21. 
at the 14-yard line as the clock running down to the two-minute timeout. Plunkett will go to the sidelines and ask Tom Flores, hey, what do we do now, Coach? <laughs> <laughs> There's the timeout, official timeout. Two minutes left in the first half at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia where the Eagles and the Oakland Raiders have held each other scoreless. Nick for a meal. How he has built the success of this Eagle team. He started with a season of four and ten, then went five and nine, then nine and seven in the playoffs, then eleven and five in the playoffs. This year, ten and one. You just can't program it in a textbook any better than that. And I do think if you look in the phone book, his residence is listed as Veteran Stadium, Philadelphia, <laughs> Pennsylvania. He's here all week long. Only goes home two days a week. He sleeps here Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday nights. Third down, twenty-one officially. Just dives it out to the 16-yard line, and the Eagles are going to get excellent field position now as the punting teams come on with 150 left in the half. What's it going to take to break this game open offensively? We, I, we knew coming into the game that both of these teams had excellent defenses, but is it going to take a block punt by Philadelphia here or a, a good punt return by Philadelphia to break it open? It seems like we need something just to kind of get it going. I'm surprised what? the Eagles didn't spend a timeout. It's gone from 152, now down to 125. Clock running. Guy will take all the time he can. Char is back at his own 43. They got it off right at the one-second mark, and a bad kick by Guy. But Shara fields it at the 35, and he gets it to the 45. I said a bad kick because of distance but because it was so low good one to return 50 yards on the punt by Ray Guy that's 14 yards better than his first one don't forget all the scores and highlights at halftime so they're down to a minute and four seconds still more than enough time for the Eagles who have two timeouts left remember they used one in the first quarter on a confusion on third down well, they have Tony Franklin as a weapon, too. He is a very, very good long field goal kicker. I have a feeling, I'll go out on the limb, the first team that scores, I think, is going to win this game. All right, we'll mark that one down, Bob Trumpy. Ball at the 45 of the Eagles. Jaworski has Harris and Montgomery behind him. his 10th of the year and Hayes is to the 30 and all the way to the 36 yard line and ladies and gentlemen there is a young man who may well be not Jaworski but Lester Hayes the top pass defender in this league 10 interceptions he's had three others called back that weren't his fault for the penalty otherwise would have 13 and Hayes has been brilliant he's in his fourth year out of Texas A&M and here it is again Dick, I'll tell you, when Jaworski sits up right here, he was open. That pump cost him an interception. Smith was open early, uncovered. Hayes was sitting on the outside of him and had a chance to come over and make the interception. I imagine when Jaworski looks at the film on Tuesday of that play, he will try to bring back that pump fake he had to the other side because Smith was open. And to give you an idea of how big that 10th interception was, it ties the Oakland all-time team record by Tom Morrow and Dave Grayson. Plunkett in trouble again, and he's tackled forward to the 36th, the line of scrimmage, and we'll see if the Raiders call time. With the clock showing 43 seconds, they do. I want to go back a moment to Lester Hayes, and we'll talk more about him when we come back from this commercial message. Timeout, 43 seconds left in the first half in Philadelphia. The Raiders nothing, the Eagles nothing. Oakland has the ball at its own 36. Seating announcement furnished as a public service by the National Football League. Lester Hayes, in just his fourth year in the National Football League, you see him behind some of that activity across the way, number 37. Gets his 10th interception. He leads the NFL this year. Plunkett on second down and 10. Throwing it in. Almost intercepted by Jerry Robinson, who picked it right out of the waiting hands of... 84, Derek Ramsey, just into the game. Caught a couple of big passes in the Monday night win up at Seattle. Neither team, Bob Trumpy, has picked up a first down in its last five possessions. The defense is dominated. Well, 
if the other team doesn't score, I guarantee you're going to do no worse than tie. So uh, you win with defense in the NFL, and the Philadelphia Eagles are 10 and 1 with only one 300-yard 300 300 passing game and one 100-yard rushing game. They've done it on defense. 36 seconds left. Weddington with a flag down gets it out to the 43-yard line. Reggie Wilkes 51, and Claude Humphrey 87 in on the tackle. I believe we might have motion against the Raiders. Jim Tunney with the black hat, the referee. No, it was offside Philadelphia. Uh -huh. So that's a break for the Raiders. Stops the clock with 31 seconds left and gives the Raiders another play where it'll be third and five. I don't blame them for running the ball every time that Plunkett has gone back to throw it. There's been a couple of Philadelphia Eagles there to uh, greet him. That's They now have six sacks on the day. Encroachment. Number 43 defense, still third down. Now at the 41 yard line, the Raiders have the ball and a chance for a couple of long plays against that Eagle defense. There's the first defensive back picked in the first round by the Eagles, Roy Neal Young. Chandler right. To the left is Branch. And he is to the 39 of the Eagles. Well, there's Ramsey at 6'4", using his height well. A 20-yard play. Ramsey, who grew up across the bridge in New Jersey at Camden, and was a high school quarterback. A lot of people here watching him today. He was also a college quarterback at the University of Kentucky. And he is the heir apparent to the spot now held by Raymond Chester. Obviously, very good hands. He's got good speed. He is a new generation tight end. More and more pass receiving out of that tight end. Uh, like Kellen Winslow down in San Diego. He's a very, very important part of any offense now because it takes pressure off those outside receivers if you've got a tight end who can get down the field. Ozzie Newsom, another of the Cleveland Browns. Ramsey, uh, just to complete his story, as Plunkett talks in the sidelines with his coach Tom Flores, he mentioned he was a high school quarterback in Camden, a college wishbone quarterback at Kentucky. His high school tight end was Art Still, the outstanding wow. lineman of the Kansas City Chiefs. He, too, went to Kentucky. Well, that was quite a package. You could put nine chemistry majors with those two. <laughs> a pretty good high school team. And uh, now they're both starring in the National Football League, although Ramsey uh, blooming a bit later. Uh, his three catches you saw have all been this week. Two up at Seattle. Ah, you're night. right. Art still is 6'7". That's a good combination in high school, right? A 6'4 quarterback thrown to a 6'7 tight end. Wow, I didn't... No, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't want to do that. <laughs> I've gotten smarter in my years. Why did I ever want to play this game? I just wonder <laughs> when I hear those sounds. Down at the 39-yard line, Oakland has moved the ball better than the Eagles by far, but they have not scored. They've had a pass intercepted in the Eagle end zone. They've fumbled at the Eagle five, and they've missed a field goal. 22 seconds left. for Chandler and appeared that either the ball might have been tipped or Plunkett had his arm hit under the pressure of Claude Humphrey again, number 87. Neither quarterback has had good numbers here in the first half and the defense is against the pass as we told you. These two teams have been outstanding all year and they have been again today. Worth noting too that Claude Humphrey has played his entire second quarter at defensive left end. Dennis Harrison has not been in the ball game. Claude is somewhat of a specialist on the pass rush. I guess he figures that Oakland's going to throw the ball more than run it. We're keeping our eye on Humphrey, who has certainly had his eye on Plunkett. Ramsey back in. He is lined up on the left side. Both wide receivers to the right. Second and ten. 17 seconds left. First half. Plunkett down the middle to Chandler. Incomplete. And Chandler thought he was held. Yeah. I'm surprised there's not a flag on that. Young got away with a hand. And Chandler goes back to the huddle third and ten. Time remaining, nine seconds. So the Raiders have to hope for one sizable gain and then a possible field goal try. Both quarterbacks, interestingly, Joe Costanza, our statistician, are six for 17. So the defenses have been tough. Far awaiting a possible field goal chance. 13 for 23, but he's 0 for 5 outside the 50. Long for Chandler. Incomplete in the end zone. And Chandler got away with a little bump 
Smith himself that time. And the Raiders have picked on Roynell Young all day. He's only given up one long reception, and that one long reception, he slipped on the uh, artificial service here at the vet. He's done a fine job. He was the sixth defensive back taken in the 1980 draft, evidence of just how good the defensive backs were in the 1980 draft. Chandler used his free arm, the left arm, to give Young a little push incomplete. I suppose that makes him even. He thought he was interfered with on the last play. Jump ball. Tit for tat. So fourth down and only two seconds left. Out of field goal range. Plunkett will go for one last desperation pass. Chandler and Bradshaw to the right. They might go to Chester. He's the big tall. Chester thought he was pushed, but in that crowd, everyone was getting a show. A rare first half without a single point in Philadelphia. They go to the locker rooms. The Raiders, nothing. The Eagles, nothing. Missile exercise, Atlantic Rain. Bob, before uh, we go to your analysis, well, we're going to take a quick look at something we showed you at the start of the game. The two coaches in this game, both college opponents, there's Tom Flores and Dick Vermeil. They played against each other, Pacific against San Jose State, 23 years ago, and here they are coaching against each other today. We have 10 seconds. Quick comment. That's, uh, gonna be that's it. That's it. <laughs> I'm surprised at the defense. We knew they had good ones, but they're both playing extremely well defensively. Okay, let's go now to New York. On this 12th Sunday of the NFL season, there's an awful lot going on. While the Eagles and Raiders continue to battle to a standoff at the vet, the Falcons are winning again. They're beating the Bears, and everything is topsy-turvy in the AFC Central because the Browns are beating the Bengals while the Oilers and the Steelers are being upset. We'll get to the scores and the highlights of Sunday number 12 right after this time out for these messages from your local station. It's 30 years of TV comedy hits. Very interesting. A look back at TV's funniest moments and the stars who kept us laughing Tuesday. Wednesday on Real People, Sarah Spen. Starting this day, the AFC Central had some big games on tap with the Browns going against the Bengals and the Steelers and the Oilers in very tough ball games. And we are now underway. On this Sunday, number 12, the NFL season, we'll try to get you caught up on just what has happened around the league. Out in Philadelphia, Veteran Stadium, best record in the AFC, at least a tie for that, belongs to the Oakland Raiders. Best record in the NFC belongs to the Philadelphia Eagles. They are scoreless at halftime, and there is an awful lot of hitting going on at Veteran Stadium. Jim Plunkett. Six-game winning streak on the line for the Raiders. Seven-game winning streak on the line for the Eagles. Hits Raymond Chester. Looks like they're going to score, but Jerry Robinson comes away from a, with a fumble. And just like that, Philly has turned back that scoring opportunity. Plunkett looked like he had a touchdown pass here, but an excellent play by Roy Nell Young. Right there, slaps the ball away. That ball game still scoreless at the half. Big ball game taking place in Buffalo, too, at Rich Stadium. Steelers against the Bills. Steelers scored first. Joe Ferguson picked off by Robin Cole. He goes 34 yards down the sideline. Brought down at the three. Two plays later, Franco Harris finds some running room just like that. He takes it in. Touchdown, 75th of the career for Franco. Puts the Steelers in front, 7-0. Then Joe Ferguson went to work. 29-yard touchdown pass right here to Jerry Butler. Super catch in the end zone over Blunt. Worked so well, Ferguson went to it again, this time from 10 yards out. Touchdown again, moved him into a 14-7 lead before the half ended. Steelers got a field goal, and so it is 14-10 at the half. New England out in front of Baltimore. Patriots trying to get back on the winning track after losing their last two and three of their last four. They're out in front of the Colts at halftime by a score of 10-0. Colts with a road record of 5-1, best road team in the NFL. Matt Cavanaugh got the start today over Steve Grogan. He directed the Patriots to their first touchdown. Don Calhoun going in from a yard out. Just like that, Patriots in front, 7-0. They got a field goal from John Smith at the intermission. They're out in front by a score of 10-0. Precipitation thus far, no scoring either. As the Eagles and Raiders, all defense. And as you look elsewhere in the NFL today, with the Oilers being upset by the Jets, Pittsburgh losing at the moment to Buffalo, and Cleveland winning, that certainly will tie a knot tighter in that central division of the AFC. Buffalo winning 
And New England trying to di dismiss Baltimore in a very important game for the Colts. And in the West, Oakland, as you see Ron Jaworski warm up, looking for a victory that would keep them out of a first place tie with San Diego, the Chargers winning earlier Thursday night at Miami. Philadelphia, meanwhile, realizing the tough part of its schedule is ahead. Needs to continue its winning ways. They've won seven in a row. They still have to play San Diego away next week. They still have a game at Dallas. And, of course, the Cowboys are salivating at the opportunity of getting a rematch with uh, this Philadelphia team. They also have to play the St. Louis Cardinals, and they are the only team to beat the Philadelphia Eagles so far this season. Interesting, too, Dick, that the Eagles' record, their opponent's record so far through these 11 games, was 37 and 62. Their remaining five opponents, including the Oakland Raiders, are 34 and 21. So you are right. The toughest part of their schedule is ahead of them. This is where these young guys are going to be proven champions or not. That's right. In fact, uh, just to run it down, Philadelphia has to play at San Diego, and then they have Atlanta, St. Louis, and Dallas. So no resting spots in that schedule. Raiders take the field first. Dick Vermeil with a final word to his Eagles. We want to mention those uh, those pictures we showed you of 1957 of Vermeil and Flores as college quarterback opponents. Dave Payne of the San Jose Mercury brought an old program to the park and uh, was kind enough to let us use that. And Dave, a most interesting article. I know you in the Bay Area uh, read it in the Mercury, San Jose Mercury this morning on that man, Dick Vermeil. There's the Eagles schedule. And uh, that's a rough hole. Jim Plunkett getting ready as the Raiders will have the ball first in this second half. First time we've seen barefooted Tony Franklin as he tees it up. Ira Matthews, Arthur Whittington are deep for the Oakland Raiders. There's the Raider remaining schedule. They have an easier way to the playoffs than do the San Diego Chargers. Franklin fairly short. Matthews at the 12. The star of the special teams. Sport Magazine with a feature on the Eagles special teams unit. There's Jamona. And also the statistics of the first half, Bob. Look at the yards rushing and total yards for the Eagles and the Oakland Raiders. Time of possession, very, very close. The turnovers have really gone in the Eagles' favor. And that missed field goal, it's been a defensive struggle. Time of possession. You fail to mention that Jamona is Dick Vermeil's nephew. Right, uh, Dick's sister's son. In fact, Louis, the name after Dick Vermeil's father. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Something else about Louis Jamona you may not know. We'll tell you after this play. <laughs> Jim Plunkett sets up shop at the Oakland 22. Gives to Van Egan. Wally across the 25 yard line. Jamona. Apparently, and it's from the article in Sport Magazine, Ron Jaworski earlier this year was coming out of the tunnel to go to the field before the game, and Jamona had his helmet off and was pounding his head against the concrete wall in the tunnel. And, and Jaworski said, what in the world are you doing, Louis? He said, hey, I like to have stars in my eyes before I go out to play. Oh, that's a special teams guy. That gives us a very, very bad name. Ex-football player. Second down and four. Robinson at 6-2 and 2-18 and 9-9 speed for a linebacker. And Dick, we must go back to our key that we began the football game with, and that was with Art Shell at left tackle. If he's off the line of scrimmage, it appears that the Raiders are going to throw the ball or run a draw. And we must mention that the Philadelphia Eagles with six sacks so far in the first half, it may be a key in this football game. Now, Tom Flores may also know about that and get Art Shell back up on the line of scrimmage. We'll have to see if the key still holds in the second half. Shell lining up right on the line of scrimmage. Third and a yard. Van Egan running behind up Sean Shell, and a flag goes down. The man farthest from the play. One of the judges deep on the near sidelines has tossed a flag. And he is the man that's watching the tight end. I'm not sure who he might have caught. Personal foul. Shot block. Against the Raiders. Now that'll cost them what appears to be a first down. Tom Flores. 
Very little animation from the first quarterback of the Raiders, 1960 through 1966. He's talking to Raymond Chester, and that side judge's responsibility is to watch the tight end. It may be on number 88, Raymond Chester of the Oakland Raiders. Kenny King, 33, buckles the strap, and he'll be coming back in as Tunney marks off a big one. That's a 15, not a 10-yard penalty. First to fall, cross back block, still third down. I didn't tell us who. Well, as a former tight end, you can appreciate that rule, can you not, in both uh, regards? Yes, I can, and I do think the tight ends have used that, that chop block an awful lot, especially in the 10 years that I played, and I was a guilty party myself. It's good for a professional football to outlaw that block completely. You catch a man on a blind side, even though he's on the line of scrimmage, you have a running start, you can really put him away for his career. Now it's third down and 15. got the first down. He's all the way to the 28-yard line. So with that 15-yard penalty, Oakland went from third and one to third and 16, and Van Egan gets 12, but now it's fourth down. And I do think, as I remember, that's only the first draw that Oakland has run all day, and with the pass rush they're getting from Philadelphia, obviously an adjustment made at halftime by Tom Flores and his staff. Eagles with those six sacks, and great pressure on Plunkett, especially in the second quarter, and uh, Tom Flores is undoubtedly going to a change in strategy. John Shara stands at the 30. Raymond Guy to kick. Guy averaged 42 yards a punt on three kicks in the first half. Almost over his head again, and he hits a wobbler. Shara doesn't call for a fair. that Shara, as he caught the ball, did not have a good grip on it, but the Raider first man ran right by him. One of the most selfish players there is in the game. He'll play any spot, and that may be the break the Eagles need, Dick. The Eagles are in Oakland territory with a timeout. And Shara with that 20-yard punt return. He was the quarterback for Dick Vermeil when Vermeil's UCLA team won that Rose Bowl game that set Vermeil on his way to the pro ranks. First down at the 44 of Oakland. The give to Leroy Harris. He gets a yard or two. Dave Browning, who has been outstanding, number 73, and Matt Millen, 55, made the tackle. Dick, I'm rather surprised at that call. Um, Leroy Harris has had a pulled hamstring for most of the season. And they are, the Eagles are trying to avoid that second down, third down, long yardage situation, and yet they run the ball in just a straight dive on their first possession here in the second half. Bob, maybe it's just to break away from tendencies because on uh, the Eagles' seven possessions in the first half, on first down five times, Montgomery ran, so maybe they felt that uh, Oakland would be king on him. Yeah, but why wouldn't you give it to a running back who averages for his career about 4.9 yards a carry as opposed to a guy who averages three? Well, he got just two, so it's second and eight. of Ted Hendricks, and it's an incomplete pass. The ball being juggled, and Montgomery, I don't know whether that was a whole mental reaction. If it was, it was a very bright play because he was going to lose five if he didn't drop it. And the ever-present Ted Hendricks, as you look at a score there. 17-7, to New England has scored again. 23-yard, no, that's uh, Baltimore's first score, excuse me, after a 17-0 lead. Joe Washington on a 23-yard pass gets the Colts on the board. Drew, uh, at this point in the football game, Philadelphia's offense leaves a lot to be desired. And I know they're going against a good defense, but they have established nothing so far in this football game. It's third down and eight. Carmichael split right, wide right is Rodney Parker. Charlie Smith is split left. Jaworski, incomplete, intended for Parker. And it was well covered. And boy, when you throw in the area of Lester Hayes, you're asking for trouble. Matuzak was right on Jaworski. Somebody made a mistake somewhere. That was thrown behind him. That was a poorly thrown pass. And I don't want to point the finger at Mr. Jaworski. There is the Eagles scouting booth above calling down the plays. And the man on the far right is Sid Gilman. I guess I, <laughs> when you talk about Gilman with the Eagle players, they say genius, an offensive genius. 
versus Philadelphia. The punt by Runniger, well covered by Robinson. In fact, Robinson could have caught the ball had he wanted to. It went out of bounds at the nine-yard line. An excellent kick. Field position now in the favor of the Eagles. Uh, still no score. Third quarter, four minutes play. Coach of the Los Angeles Rams, coach of the Chargers. He's been in this league a long time. University of Cincinnati. This is college team. They say no one knows the passing game any better. Once again, we come back to our key, Art Shell. See if we can pick up what they might do on first down. That's a run. And it is the King. King out across the 10 and whipped hard by Jerry Robinson, 56. Robinson is fast and also tough at 218. Last year, he played inside, didn't he, when Bill Berge got That's hurt? Right. He did, and loved it in there. He said, I got more action. It's like playing first base in baseball. The ball was always coming to you. It takes a lot of guts at 218 pounds to get in there with those big heavyweights. They retired his uniform at UCLA. He wore number 84 as a collegian. And watch out. He wants to be a sportscaster. If he moves as well in the booth as he does down there, we may be in trouble. Yes, sir. That looks like another run for Oakland. of Chester, well covered by veteran Bill Berge. Plunkett did a good job of just escaping the rush. And it's the first time we've called Bill Berge's name today. A big part of, he is the inspirational leader, I believe, of that Philadelphia defense. Underwent major knee reconstruction last season, and everybody's rather surprised that he's back playing and playing very well. Lives in Chad's Ford, Pennsylvania, the home of the famous painting family, the artists, the Wyeths, Andrew and Jamie. I'd like him to invite me over to this place just to maybe wander down the road and meet his neighbors. Oh, outstanding contribution they've made artistically to our, in our society. King and Van Egan split behind Plunkett on third and a long seven. They run. Tough run indeed by Kenny King, close to a first down before Reggie Wilkes, 51, could make the tackle. Hit short of the first down. Uh, you see where the, the real game is won. It's simple to win a football game. You control the line of scrimmage. King protecting the football. Then a slippery little running back. But as you said, Dick, Wilkes on the tackle. Keeps him from getting a first down and... Once again, Philadelphia, not great for field position, but decent field position. Depending on the foot of Guy, he can sometimes <laughs> bury you deep. Yes, Char is at his 39. Guy has had a few high snaps today. He's had to go up twice to pick him off the tree. That's on the money. And he hammers it. Shara to his 32. Seven yard line before Derek Ramsey, 84, and 46 Todd Christensen can make the tackle. A 50 yard punt, 15 yard return, still no score in Philadelphia. Does the pump loom large in your life? Thanksgiving Day as Jim Zorn, Steve Largent, and the high flying Seattle Seahawks take on Danny White, Preston Pearson, and the hard charging Dallas Cowboys. Get that down home feeling with Turkey and Texas football Thursday, November 27th on NBC. No score in Philadelphia. Third quarter elsewhere. Cleveland now moves in front of Cincinnati 21 to 7 in the third quarter. Kansas City trails St. Louis 10 0 second quarter. We'll have all the scores and highlights. NFL report following the game. We'll have more scores for you in a moment. First down, the Eagles at their own 47 after the 50 yard punt. Jaworski to Montgomery. What a Talk about setting up the defense wide and cutting back inside. Montgomery executed beautifully. Great block also by Leroy Harris on the strong safety who was coming in there to try to support Yassim. 36. Mike Davis is trying to hate and, and Harris on the block and Wilbert Montgomery up through there. Stumbling forward to the 40, almost the 46-yard line. We're at second down and three. Eagles have not had a first down since the first quarter. Harris may have one now as he's to the 30, 
close to the 38. Now they're going to mark it a little short, so it'll be third down and less than a yard. Did you say the Eagles haven't had a first down since the first quarter? Not since the first quarter. Wow. There's the total in the game. Oakland hasn't done that much better itself. Just a couple since the first quarter. And we're now nine minutes and 20 seconds remaining in the third period. And I don't think they have a first down here either. It's going to be third down and very, very short. The thing about the Eagles, in a situation like this, Dick Vermeil has often gone to play action and go for the touchdown. I think, though, at this point in the ball game, he's got to think about that first down to establish something, some consistency in his offense. They have not had a long drive yet today, and that's characteristic of the Philadelphia offense. Coach of the year, and more significantly, voted that honor by the other coaches in the National Football League. Great job. Browning and Osteen finally secured the tackle. And right behind Stan Walters, an all-pro offensive tackle, number 75 of the Eagles. And Petey Perro. You see him standing up Reggie Kinlaw in the middle, and Harris hits that center right in the back. But it's a first down, and that's their first first down since the first quarter. That must seem like eons ago for the Eagles, who are looking for their eighth consecutive win today. Best record in football coming in. Worski, less than a third of his passes have been complete. got it on the first bounce. Lester Hayes had that been deflected a little higher. Lester the molester, they called him at Texas A&M, was <laughs> on his way. Uh, John Matusak was right in Jaworski's face, too. You'll see him on Jerry Sizemore. Kind of a slip, slip block. He's got to get out there in a hurry trying to get Hendricks. It was overthrown. Here's an interesting statistic for the Eagles. Only four first-round draft picks, Sizemore being one of them. Most teams have two or three times that many. So Dick Vermeil has built a winning ball club here without the benefit of a draft until just the last year or two. By contrast, the Raiders have ten first-round picks. Tuzak tracks him down just inside the Oakland 34. A big twos. He can still move. Yes, an unusual screen pass, too, to the tight end. Uh, there's there's he, the Raider lineup. There's 20 of their 45 players picked in the first two rounds. So you just figure to get your quality that way. I mean, that's the story of almost every franchise. The Eagles have done it uh, with a lot of other things. And Vermeil comes up, I won't have a player, I don't care what round, unless he has character and dedication, you're on the train otherwise. To add something to that, the Eagles had a first-round draft choice in 1973. They had two, and they didn't have another first-round draft choice until 1979, Jerry Robinson. The Bears have taken the lead at Atlanta. Vince Evans on a scramble for a run. Oh, Montgomery right into the arms of Dave Browning and Cedric Hardman. Hendricks was there, too. Excuse me, Dick, but if you've got confidence in your defense, right now is the time if you're going to have a fake field goal, pull it out of the bag. Here try comes it. Franklin, and he's going to try a long one if he tries one. Now, let's see where they set this up. The line of scrimmage is a 34. That would make it at least the 41 or a 51-yard try. Could be eight yards back, 52. Franklin, as you know, has the second longest field goal in NFL history, 59. Last year as a rookie against Dallas, Tom Dempsey, 63, the record. This would be 51, well within his range. Tying up, long enough, good! Oh.
Cumberland, New York at Schaefer Stadium in Foxborough. A couple of second half scores. 10-0 at the half. First play of the third quarter. Rod Schultz returns an interception 42 yards. Give the Patriots a 17-0 lead. Due to a shoulder problem, been an in and out day for Burt Jones. One of the out times, Greg Landry comes in. Touchdown pass to Joe Washington. It's 17-7 in the third. Back to the vet and Dick Enberg. Thank you, Brian. We've had our first score here. Tony Franklin hammering a 51-yard field goal, and he got it by plenty. He kicks it off to Arthur Whittington and Ira Matthews. 3-0 Eagles, seven minutes left, third quarter. Short, Matthews at the 13, 25, and he's to the 28-yard line. Let's go back to the field goal and watch Franklin's reaction after he hit that 51-yarder. Dick, prior to the football game, when he was out warming up, he was 5 of 8 from 55 yards in practice. And along with being an excellent kicker, he's got to have the coldest foot in the NFL from November on. There's no doubt about that. No wonder he's single. <laughs> Whoa. He is a character, as most kickers are. Now you see he'll put on the that thermal boot to keep that leg warm. He says he doesn't feel cold even in the ice. Look at that. He's got it back in the like a picnic basket. Meanwhile, the Raiders trying to establish a ground game so that they can take the heat off Plunkett in the passing attack. And it's Kenny King out to about the 32, and it'll be second down and six. What a very unimaginative offense on the Oakland Raiders' part. I wonder if they really have a genuine fear of this defense. They don't want to turn the ball over. I know that. But still, you've got gifted receivers in Chandler, a good pattern runner, Cliff Branch, an awful good receiver, and yet they run the ball like that. Well, Plunkett is only 6 for 20, and Jaworski 7 for 21. Neither man hitting Plunkett. Get some help, and Branch drops the ball at the 40-yard line. It was drilled, but Branch will normally catch that one. Bob Chandler, they had a blanket on him on the other side. And he did try to come back for the football, but he slipped once again. Here you'll see Chandler trying to get down the field. That's the one bump that's allowed, Roynell Young. Now watch Chandler turn around and try to come back to the football, and you see he slips. And therefore, the pass in front to uh, Cliff Brandt. Dick, I will notice also that Archell appears to be up on the line of scrimmage now when they're throwing the football. Our key from the first half is not here the second half, and the Eagles have not had a sack yet. Since phone call may have been made to Al Davis. Pass, pass. He's back this time, and it is a pass. Playing incomplete to Whittington, had no chance to catch it. And the Eagle defense is held. These fans are used to cheering here in Philadelphia, aren't they? They haven't had much to yell about. Buffalo has now taken a 21 to 10 lead against the Super Bowl champs. 34 yard run by Curtis Brown of the Bills. They're looking for a nine and three. Raymond Guy with John Shara back at the 26. Six minutes left, third quarter. down. Clip. Eric Jensen made the tackle and we did have a clip back at about the 25 yard line. Appeared to be Ray Phillips that just gave the push from behind. There it is. 45 yard kick. 12 yard return nullified by the clipping call. It'll pin the Eagles deep. And all of a sudden they are right back in that hole and they were the, the first half. Bad field position and this is this is so terribly important in a game like this where you've got two teams that are very, very even. So, Jim Tunney, the referee, spots it at the 14-yard line. First to fall during the run back, flipping, number 58, first down, time is up. Excuse me, it was not uh, Phillips. Well, they don't have a 58. I think it was we'll Phillips. You, we'll keep you in doubt. <laughs> time out, 5.54 left, third quarter. The news here on NBC, you did get Tug McGraw, right? <laughs> <laughs> the skipper of the Dodgers, he's going to... Next season, through football eyes here in 
Philadelphia. Norristown is home base. Here to visit his family and enjoy this game today in person. Three nothing Eagles from their own 14. Jaworski, seven for 21, hands it off to Montgomery. And he breaks out to the 22 yard line and a gain of nearly nine. Next Saturday on NBC Sports World, four o'clock Eastern time, some of America's finest gymnasts are some of the ladies, Tracy Talavera, Marcia Frederick, Julianne McNamara, compete in the United States versus China gymnastics competition. Then some of our nation's strongest men gather, U.S. powerlifting championships, plus final round action, legends of bowling. Big, big show next Saturday, right here on NBC Sports World. Dick, I would expect that Ron Jaworski and the Philadelphia Eagles will give the ball an awful lot to Wilbur Montgomery for the rest of the game. 12 rushes now, 54 yards for Montgomery. Montgomery close to a first down. While they measure, let's go to NFL 80 in New York and Brian Gumbel. Thank you, Dick Enberg. At Rich Stadium in Buffalo, the Bills have padded their lead against the Steelers. Curtis Brown out of Missouri, finding some room around left end, reverses his field, takes it 34 yards at all, and the Bills are taking it to the Steelers, 21-10 in the third. Let's go back to Philly. Dick Enberg, Bob Trumpy. All right, Merlin Olson will be back with us on Thursday, Thanksgiving Day, Dallas, and the Seahawks part of the Thanksgiving Day Fair. Had to work with Bob Trumpy today, the former Cincinnati Bengals star tight end. Did not make the first down. It's third and one for the Eagles. And yeah, they're a little mix-up. Preffley and Harris fighting for a position. And they don't get it off. Yes, they did. Just did. Oh! the 20 the Eagles recover and that play had trouble written all over it right from the start oh boy they dodged a bullet there the Oakland Raiders have not gotten a break today Wilbur Montgomery slow in getting up he's very lucky to come up with this football at all he never really got the handle on it wow Oakland is still to get its first break of this game so Max Rudiger will kick from about his own 10 Matthews waiting. He'll come up to get it. Nope. Bounces at the 45. Eagle bounce to the 40. Out of bounds after an Oakland bounce at the 42. Now the Raiders trailing by a field goal in this tight defensive struggle. Three and a half minutes left in the third quarter. We'll put it in play in good field position. 37-yard punt by Runniger. The Eagles, three. Raiders, nothing. Three and a half minutes left in the quarter. Well, that was Coach Brian Gumble in New York at Cleveland. Brian Seif is doing a number on the Bengals. This is his fourth touchdown pass of the day. It's 25th of the year. Brownies in front 28-7 while the Oilers and Steelers are losing. Dick? Oh, could be a big day for Cleveland, Brian. And I know you've got more updates. We'll be right back to you in New York. Here in Philadelphia, 42-yard line. The Raiders have it. Their own territory trailing 3-0. Three and a half minutes left. of the second half. Pass. Play action pass. Deep. Chandler's open. Oh. And he missed him by plenty. And Chandler was open. So it'll be second and ten for Plunkett and the Raiders. Now back to New York and another update. Okay, Dick, it's a busy afternoon trying to keep you up to date on the scores. New England kicking off here to Baltimore. Nesby Glasgow gets hit. Ball comes loose right into the arms of Rick Sanford. Easy 17-yard touch. Pats are ahead by 20. Dick? Thank you, Brian, and it's one of the features we're very proud of on NBC. And Brian, such a superb job back in the studio. Bring you up to date on all the other action around the NFL each Sunday. Second and 10 at the 42-yard line. Clark, he'll run it, 45, 50, 45, fumble, oh. and the Eagles say they recover. No, the signal is Oakland's ball. Well, Bob, you said the Raiders hadn't had a break, and they got a big one there. Their first one of the football game, too. Plunkett didn't see the man trailing him from behind, Jerry Robinson, who shook it loose. That seems to be somewhat characteristic, too. You see Clark almost free there. Somewhat characteristic of Jim Plunkett. He carries the ball very loose there. And he should tuck it in like any good running back. Or 
How in the world did Oakland come up with that football, Dick? Here to be Arthur Whittington downfield, got the bounce. Wow. To Oakland, a first down at the 42 of the Eagles. Whittington. Figure he recovered the fumble. You ought to get a chance to lug the pumpkin. And he's down to the 38-yard line. Make him a star. Make him a star. Well, he was at SMU, and he's very proud of his Mustangs in their fine season this year. Plunkett looks at second down. Call it six. Credit Charlie Johnson with that last tackle. Still very conservative by both offenses, trying not to make the big mistake. And field position has played such an important part in this ball game, and now Oakland has it on their side. Less than two minutes remaining in the third quarter. Van Egan, good hole, and he dives to the 33-yard line. It'll be short about a yard from a first down. 95, John Bunting in on the tackle. Bunting, big baseball fan, speaking of Tom Lasorda, Bunting is a Baltimore Orioles fan. In fact, he wears an Oriole ball cap at practice. And I asked him, are you really a big Baltimore fan? Who is your favorite? He said, well, I'll tell you how much of a fan I am. My son's name is Brooks. Brooks Bunting. Will that cause some baseball announcer some problems if he does become a baseball? Yeah. Brooks Bunning is Bunning. Bunning. <laughs> well, it's better than hit and run, I guess. Yeah. I, <laughs> I suppose also the kid should be happy if his favorite, his dad's favorite baseball player wasn't Boo. Boo Bunning? <laughs> yeah, well, that's right, too. Third and one. Whittington. Tried to catch the Eagles pinching inside, and even with Whittington's speed, he couldn't beat Berge and Blackmore. Well, a big choice here for Tom Flores. Do you go for it? I think they're somewhat short. Fourth down and less than a yard. Do you go for it? Do you try the field goal? Well strung out here. Look at Berge come up there through the hole. Sticks his helmet in him, and then cleaned up by the defensive lineman. Carl Harrison. Harrison. Boy, is he a hustler? Even Claude Humphrey said he's never seen a good player, and Harrison is, hustle as hard as he does. Practices, games, he's always working at the maximum. They go for it on fourth and one. Van Egan up on a wing, only King behind Plunkett. King. He doesn't make it. quiet they have a chance to explode for the defense you know the Philadelphia Eagles defense against the run two is the second best there is in the NFL this year Atlanta number one they're allowing just 93 yards average per game a tremendous pursuit angle by all those defensive people from the Eagles and as I said the first team that scores may win it holds true so far and the Eagles have been the toughest team in the entire NFL to score against by far and they're showing you why today seconds remaining third quarter Jaworski play action complete Griffley first down Oakland 47 17 yards Matt Millen made the tackle and that'll be the last play of the third quarter and I think that's only the second time that Jaworski has used his tight end Ah, them 84s can catch the football. Or is it those 84s? I hope it's those. Football? All right. That's the end of the third quarter in Philadelphia. The Eagles three, Raiders nothing. Back after these messages from your local station. Sunday, the inside story of the event that... quarter, 3-0 Philadelphia. The running star of the Eagles, Wilbert Montgomery, we understand, was kicked in the head in the helmet, and he's woozy on the sidelines. That's why Billy Campfield has been in the backfield behind Jaworski. You see Philadelphia's success in the fourth quarter. Oakland also has played very well in the fourth quarter. Eagles lead 3-0. First down. Campfield is the tailback with Harris at fullback. three-yard line. It'll be second down and six. Matuzak and Hendricks, the tacklers for Oakland. Philadelphia's got to be very conservative at this point. 
once again they're on the plus side of the field they've got good field position they don't want to turn the ball over here and I think it's a factor that Wilbur Montgomery's not in the game in there is 4.5 or 6 yard per carry average would really help them right here Campfield is averaging just 2.7 a carry this year 107 yards the Eagles have been beaten only by St. Louis in 11 games here's Campfield he's close to the first down inside the 40 Appears to be shy by a yard and bring up third down and one. Reggie Kinlaw on the submarine tackle with Ted Hendricks there too. Now you can imagine the fans of the Cowboys watching and cheering for Oakland and those out on the West Coast in San Diego rooting hard for Vermeil's Eagles. Eagles have not allowed a touchdown in the last eight quarters. You'll recall they shut out Washington 24 nothing last week, and they lead 3 nothing today. And you know, it. Excuse me, Dick. The Oakland Raiders, too, are 26-5-1 against NFC opponents, so they're not supposed to lose to this team. Big play, third and one. This is about where the Eagles made their stand. Campfield. Oh, is he hit by Millen? 55. The rookie from Penn State applauds himself and well he should as he blasted his way through and his 260 pounds dumped Campfield for a loss at the 40. A converted defensive lineman is Matt Millen. He was the other defensive tackle along with Bruce Clark for Joe Paterno. Clark now in Canada. Millen making the adjustment to inside linebacker. Curtis Dickey has just scored on a 28-yard run for Baltimore to cut New England's lead at 27-14. Ira Matthews at the 10. Runniger, an apparent punt, will kick from about midfield. Ameson to the side. Good looking kick. And it's knocked down at the 14 yard line by John Spagnola. So the Raiders trailing 3 0 with 12 and a half minutes left in the game had the ball deep in their own end first let's go to New York and Bryant all right Dick you mentioned Curtis Dickey's touchdown here's a look at it it's an end sweep out in front is Robert Pratt number 61 he'll get a good block on Rick Sanford Curtis Dickey does the rest Dickey's over 100 yards rushing on this day but the Colts still trail by 13. Dick well, you talk about Brian being on the spot. We no sooner told you about Dickey, and he showed it to you. Let's break for an act for this word. Dick, have you? Hey, where's my kid? Celotex salutes the builders of America for using 400 million. Seven games ago, the quarterback was Dan Pastorini. He broke a bone in the lower leg, and Jim Plunkett has replaced him. Pastorini, there was a story, a wire service story, that he was going to be in uniform today. Totally false. And Pastorini was a bit angered by it all. He might be able to play with two games left in the year. Plunkett goes deep for He's Chandler. Open. No, it's Whittington. Branch. Or Branch, and he as they did the first half and Branch was a trailer and they threw short to Branch and then he used Chandler's shielding block for an 86 yard touchdown. Obviously a motion formation and a total breakdown in the defense of the Philadelphia Eagles absolutely uncovered and you can see Jim Plunkett is anxious to get the ball down there. Somebody made a mistake somewhere but give credit to Plunkett. He put it right on the money. You can see it looked as if it was going to Chandler, but it went instead to Branch. He got a block from Chandler, a key block on Wilson, and then with Branch's speed, it's all over. Hey, great coverage. Teddy Nathanson, our director, George Finkel, our producer, right on top of that one. You can see it leave Plunkett's arms right to Branch, and Oakland goes in front. Here's Barr's try for point. It's good. So after struggling throughout this game, both teams unable to move. Oakland strikes on an 86-yard play from Plunkett to Branch. Plunkett's first touchdown pass in three games. And back in front, the Raiders 7-3. This Thursday, 3.30 Eastern time, we hope you'll celebrate Thanksgiving with us. NFL 80 will begin it with Ryan Gumbel giving you the inside look at the day's game that will feature the Cowboys against the Seattle Seahawks. You'll also see a feature on Seattle kicker Efren Herrera, the heritage of Thanksgiving games of the past, and also a look at the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders. That's all this Thursday, Thanksgiving Day, NFL.
The 86 yards is not the longest pass play in Raider history. That was a George Blanda to Warren Wells pass. Some of you old timers will remember in 1968, 94 yards. Tom Flores threw one to Doby Craig of 93. Back, well, just after the War of 1812. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell him you said that, Dick. No, no, please don't. So, Flores has a smile on his face for the first time today as Barr kicks it off very high. It's Campfield at the four. And he is stopped at the 17-yard line. Stopped by the backside of Jeff Barnes. It just kind of backed into him. So, the Eagles... Struggling to finally get a 51-yard field goal in the third quarter to take a 3-0 lead. Find Tom Flores, Raiders, now ahead on the bomb, and that is the Raiders' style. And it's it's tough being out there on the offensive in the offensive huddle when it's first and 84 to get back on top in this football game. One mistake. That's been the uh, the real difference in the football game. The big break. Oakland didn't get it through the first three quarters. Waited three and a half quarters to get it. And they took advantage of it. Branch has two catches, average 51. 102 yards for Branch. Not bad. 12 minutes left, plenty of time. Jaworski. Throwing from Carmichael, incomplete at the 40-yard line. Burgess Owens and Dwayne Osteen on the coverage. Carmichael, while catching two passes to extend his NFL record to 124 consecutive games his two receptions have gained a total of only six yards so they've done a good job covering the big guy they have shut down the Oakland Raiders have shut down the passing game of the Philadelphia Eagles almost completely Atlanta trying to protect its lead ahead of the Rams in the NFC West leading 21 17 Alfred Jenkins has just got a 42 yard pass for the Falcons and Buffalo now steamrolling the Steelers fourth quarter 28 to 10 backs for the Raiders. Jaworski could be intercepted. Just missed the grasp of Mike Davis on the deflection. Intended for Wilbert Montgomery, who's back in the game. Good news for the Eagles. Well, they seem to be a little disorganized right here. A good pass rush by Oakland, but he's got time. Looks off the defensive back. Then in the last second, you're correct. Throws it behind Wilbur Montgomery. He has not, Jaworski has not thrown the ball well at all today. 8 of 24, just 66 yards, and he is the leading, going into this game, the leading quarterback in the NFL. That's a good point, Bob Trumpy. Leading with a 59.5% completion average, 23 touchdowns, second to Faust, only nine interceptions. He's hit only a third of his passes today. Number 50, the center of the Eagles, a 26-yard play. And I think you can notice that Leroy Harris was dragging his leg. He has had trouble with his hamstring all season long. And finally, the Eagles find a way to dent that Oakland Raider defense with a little screen out to the flat, well set up by Jaworski, too. 11.54 left in the fourth quarter. 7-3. to three. Philadelphia trails Oakland. Eagles ball, first down at their 43. Back to the air. Down the middle. Complete. First down at the Oakland 45. Keith Crefley. Great pattern run by Crefley. 12 yards on the reception. He's to the right of your screen. And he goes up to Matt Millen and bounces off of him. And Jaworski rifles it in there. Excellent catch by Crefley. You see Stan Walters on Browning and the new pass blocking rule. The ability to use the hand. Jaworski has a very, very strong arm, and he rifled that one in there, Dick. That was uh, not by the hair of my chinny chin shin block on Walters. Jaworski first down at the Raider 45. Here's Montgomery. Right into the arms of Reggie Kinlaw and Matt Millen. Update at New England. Ten-yard pass to Carlos Pennywell, and New England has now outscored Baltimore 33-14. 
Patriots looking for their eighth win against only four losses. A defeat to Baltimore would make them 6-6 and just about goodbye in 1980 for the Colts hopes. Dick, that Patriot team, that's somewhat of a schizophrenic football team. Well, when they're hot, they're unbelievable. When they're, when they're bad, they're awful. Second and seven. Brian Sowell and a mistake. The Eagles, 88, John Spagnola. Mm. Said he learned that play when he studied under Howard Cosell at Yale. He took one of his classes from Howard. He learned that jumping off sides? No, no, I'm only teasing. <laughs> I wish I hadn't said that, matter of fact. Oh, I... Spagnola did indeed, though. He said journalism. Ball class. start, number 88 offense, still second down. John, a New no. England Patriot draftee in the ninth round, and... He's come here and made a solid contribution to the Eagles last year. He's a big kid, too, 6'4", 240. And Dick Vermeil drives this football team to try to avoid mistakes like that. They're on the field an awful lot of time during the week, and that's what he's trying to avoid, a mistake like Spagnola just made. Second and 13. to the 35 and close to a first down. Randy McClanahan made the tackle. They cleared out with Smith and then curling underneath was Montgomery. 12 yards on the reception and a good play by Philadelphia in between Lester Hayes on the outside and Ted Hendricks on the inside. Just enough for a first down. Or no, excuse me, just short of a first down. Third and one under the 10 minute mark in Philadelphia. Two first place teams Two teams, sparkling, winning skeins, six in a row for the Raiders, seven straight wins for Philadelphia. And they played as tough to their records. This is Harris. First down. And he's all the way to the 26-yard line. Burgess Owens and Osteen saved the touchdown. Great block by Wilbert Montgomery out in front. Took on the linebacker. And Harris, even with that bad leg, he able to get up there. Look at the guys up front. You got Perot at left guard, Walters at left tackle, and you can just see the back end of Wilbur Montgomery on 35. Osteen, excuse me, was not the linebacker. First down. Is this not the longest time that Philadelphia's had the football today, Dick? This has been their best drive since the touchdown that startled this crowd. 84 yards. it away from Carmichael. Osteen, 35, in his first start as a Raider, playing the corner for Monty Jackson. And done an excellent job. He's been tested several times today. And you have Carmichael at 6'8", against Osteen, who is 6'1". And he does a great job to avoid the touchdown reception. Meanwhile, at Shea Stadium, the Houston Oilers have finally scored. Mike Barber on a touchdown pass of six yards. 13 minutes left in that game. The Jets with a handle on a big, big upset. 21 to 7 lead. Second and 10, Eagles. Oakland in front, 7 3, 850 left in this game. Hardman is back in, and so is Willie Jones. bench as Spagnola hit hard and the ball popped free and the Raiders have the turnover. And the first half the Oakland Raiders could not get a break. That was a little delay pattern by Spagnola over the middle when he turned around and headed upfield. The defensive back was standing right in his face. I think you'll see 88 delay. Yes, out of the backfield. We're at the line of scrimmage. Now watch this hit by Rod Martin and the ball picked up and Oakland has dodged a bullet. Davis acting as though he wanted to give it right back the way he carried the ball. Well, you can appreciate it's a tight end. You catch that ball and you turn up field and whack. They're waiting for you. Turnovers have evened out at two apiece. Seven to three. Ron Jaworski's Eagles are down and Oakland has the ball. And it's 31. Both wide receivers to the right. 
Gets a yard or two. Second down and eight. Now let's go back to NFL 80 in New York and Brian Campbell. Okay, Dick, down by three touchdowns at Shea. The Oilers have finally gotten on the board. Kenny Stabler throws a touchdown pass of six yards to Mike Barber, but the Oilers are down by 14 in the fourth. Dick? All right, Bryant. And here, the AFC Raiders lead the NFC Eagles 7-3. to three. You see the clock ticking away toward the eight-minute mark. Second down, call it eight. Meanwhile, Cleveland is destroying Cincinnati 31-7 to seven in the fourth quarter. Browns trying to make hay. Houston are losing. Whittington. Nothing there. Boy, the Eagles have really been tough on the sweeps. Carl Hairston, 78. 68, Dennis Harrison, 71, Ken Clark. I'll tell you, the guy that's tough to play, though, was Jerry Robinson, number 56. He took on that blocker right in front of him. Raymond Chester, I think, is going to hit him. Watch Jerry Robinson knock him right back in his tracks. And that takes out Mark Van Egan. And they're all there to make the tackle. Randy Logan, 41, there as well. The ex-Michigan Wolverine, a happy man, knowing that his alma mater is going to Pasadena. Well, that would be a great defensive backfield. When Logan was at Michigan, Tom Darden played in the same defensive backfield. The record has been in the favor of the AFC, as you saw this season as last. Deflected, incomplete by Dennis Bigfoot Harrison. Bigfoot had a big hand in the way of that one. Six feet eight, 280 pounds, working on Henry Lawrence. And he realizes the guy gets by him and just gets his hand up in the air. I repeat, last week against the Washington Redskins, his defensive line deflected eight passes from Joe Theismann. <laughs> the joy of the big man. I love it. I like the way the athletes of today show their emotions. Raymond Guy to John Shara. Shara at the 26. Ten men up on the line of scrimmage for the Eagles. But they have a return on. Very high. Shara doesn't call for the fair catch. Oh, does he pay the price. 56. Jeff Barnes downfield to eat up Shara. Two former opponents on the West Coast. Barnes at Cal and Shara at UCLA. 39-yard kick. Watch the reaction as we go to commercial. Guys kick. Shara, no fair catch. It's first down at the Philadelphia 29. Time remaining, fourth quarter, 6.52. Well, this is the point in the season where Dick Vermeil wants his football team, 10 and 1, playing a good football team. Now he's going to find out what kind of character his team has. This drive may, be, may determine the season for this, for this team. Ron Jaworski has had a brilliant season, but an ordinary game. in this football game, Dick, we've seen superb defense. This play is made possible by the agility of Jaworski, and then full trajectory to Harris. Wow. Two big plays in a football game, and that's it. And that one can turn the momentum to the Eagles. They're flapping their wings down at the 28-yard line of the Oakland Raiders. 7-3. Oakland's lead now in jeopardy as Carmichael goes right, and Smith is split left. Safety man, Mike Davis, made the tackle. Isn't it strange how momentum changes so quickly, Dick? Just a great play by Jaworski, and all of a sudden, the other 10 players on the football team rise to the occasion. Great blocking up front. Montgomery carrying the ball with good protection around it. They spotted at the 
17, a nine-yard gain. Second and one. Jaworski usually goes to play action second and short. Zach Reggie Kinlaw in the center of the defense for the Raiders. They'll spot it at the 16. First down for Philadelphia. The Eagles trying to follow that pattern of outscoring their opponents in the fourth quarter. Dick, the Eagles bring in a second tight end. I think they're going to try to run it right down Oakland's throat here for the final 16 yards and a score. Protect the football. If you're a leader, the quarterback, you just say, gentlemen, this is where you blow your neck. Right here, we got it on the line. Philadelphia, 5.20 left in the fourth quarter. Montgomery. Oh, my. What a surge by Matt Millen, Randy McClanahan. And also in on the play was Dave Browning. I've never seen Browning play a better game defensively. Great play. Well diagnosed. And Montgomery has no place to go. None. Ooh, that's a cruncher. If he had cobwebs before, he's going to have them again. There are the signals by Lynn Stiles in the yellow jacket. Dick Vermeil, the head coach. The ball is at the 18-yard line. Millen, Kinlaw, McClanahan go out for Oakland as they bring in those two pass rushers, Hardman and Jones, along with an extra defensive back, McKinney. Second and 11. Blitz, Hendricks. sandwiched by Osteen and Burgess Owens and the ex-Jet Owens continues to play a solid back line at safety. The ball was there. That's just a good defensive hit. And well called too by the Oakland Raider defensive coaches. They had a blitz up front. Good coverage by Osteen. Owens there to make sure. And this has got to be this is, even though it's third down, this has got to be two down distance. I, I think they have to go for it on fourth down, wouldn't you, Dick? 422 left. Yeah, that's so critical, Bob, that the Eagles are going to take a timeout. Jaworski wants to make sure his head's in the same huddle with his offensive masterminds along the near sidelines. I like to play coach. I'm not very successful at it, but one of the plays that the uh, Eagles have used uh, with pretty good success so far today has been that tight end screen. And uh, it's kind of tough to do on a 4-2-5 configuration defense in front of you, but I think it's something to think about. It's, it's a high percentage completion, and they may come with something like that. Well, more football coming for you on Thanksgiving Thursday. We hope you'll sit down and add us to your Turkey Day holiday. 3.30 Eastern time it all begins. And then you'll see the always fun to watch Seattle Seahawks, the most unpredictable team in the National Football League, against the Dallas Cowboys. And, of course, the Cowboys, great interest uh, focused on this game as there are currently two full games behind these Philadelphia Eagles at 10-1 uh, and 8-3. and, one and, eight and three. Thursday, 3.30, Eastern Time, 12.30 in the West for Dallas and Seattle. Dick, I'm going to be down there in Dallas with you, and I guess it's my responsibility to carve the turkey. All right. I didn't know you were going to be with us. Yes. That's great. So treat, treat me nice, and I'll give you a big hey, slice listen, of turkey. The big guy will be nice to you, too. 4.22 left in this game. Jaworski back to the huddle. Used his first time out of the second half. Raiders, 4-2-5 defense. Third and 11. Buffalo in Pittsburgh. We're in the final minutes at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. Ron Jaworski, this is his third down 11 pass to the big tall end, Harold Carmichael. And look, look at him come back with a football, Dick. That's the best thing a receiver can do in that situation. And they've got the first down. These two teams, both in first place, both on winning streaks, were tied at halftime. No score. 
Tony Franklin kicked a 51-yard field goal to give the Eagles a 3-0 lead into the third quarter. A Jim Plunkett to Cliff Branch bomb of 86 yards put Oakland in front here in the fourth quarter, 7-3. And since that time, the Eagles have come marching back and have it first and goal at the seven-yard line with three minutes, 55 seconds left. Closing the door, Rod Martin, 53 of the Oakland Raiders. Dick, that's the first trap that the Eagles have run all day long. You'll see the center 50, Guy Morris, block back. You'll see the left guard pull Petey Perot. And Montgomery tries to get up through there, but a jarring hit by Rod Martin. And that's the way this game has been played. You've missed a lot of it, you people that just joined it, but it's been terrific defense from the first kickoff. Well, you saw the helmet of Montgomery almost flew right off his head on that tackle. After being kicked in the helmet, comes back to give the Eagles the lead. And Dickey takes a tremendous chance here going outside. But you can see he just outruns Owens. Millen makes a dive for him. But that's been their longest possession of the game. And it results in what might be the winning touchdown. Robert Montgomery in the Philadelphia Eagles. Montgomery's fifth touchdown of the year has given the Eagles the lead. Franklin's try for point is good. court with a timeout two minutes 56 seconds left the eagles have just marched 71 yards in nine plays and take the lead 10 to 7 a bright red fire truck a blue calliope a yellow moon a pink balloon a golden dixie jamboree yes america's true colors come through on ge TV brings you America's true colors, vivid and lifelike. And with GE Special VIR2 circuit, the color is automatic. For those of you who joined us watching the Pittsburgh Buffalo game, we understand Buffalo is running out the clock in the fourth quarter. The Bills apparently the winners, 28 to 13. Meanwhile, you've just seen the go-ahead touchdown by the Eagles, and now Tony Franklin with less than three minutes left kicks it off to Arthur Whittington. 20, 25, 30. 39-yard line. Whittington, who returned one 90 yards for a touchdown against the Bengals and came very close to sprinting free on that effort. He was stopped by Al Chesley, 59. So plenty of time for the Raiders as Jim Plunkett will try to get them at least into field goal range. All the scores and highlights coming up on NFL Report. Boy, Dick, this is a great football game. We've seen defense at its best today on both sides of the line of scrimmage. It's come down to two plays. A 46-yard pass to Leroy Harris by Philadelphia and an 86-yard touchdown by Cliff Branch. had Plunkett in his grasp the seventh sack for the Eagles today and we gave credit to the Oakland Raider defensive coaches earlier let's now give credit to the Eagles defensive coaches I believe that's the first that's the first linebacker blitz we have seen today by the Eagles and it gets to Plunkett Boy, Robinson overpowering the blocker to get to Plunkett he just would not be denied he's played another outstanding game is running 234 left should the Raiders get in field goal range the pressure will be on that man number 10 Chris Barr second and about 19 branch complete at the 41 secured on the tackle by 27 Richard Blackmore 211 210 the Raiders seem in no hurry apparently we'll just wait for that two minute timeout I think they'll give him those receptions all the way down the field, Dick. 
Watch the pressure. In the first half, the Eagles had six sacks on the Oakland Raiders. That's their first of the second half. That one earlier by Jerry Robinson. Branches catch leaves the Raiders at third and nine, and we'll be right back. Two minutes left. Has the pump got you down? Brian Gumble in New York at Shea Stadium. The Oilers, once down 21 0, are now within a touchdown. Snake Stabler finding Billy White Shoes Johnson from six yards out, and suddenly the Oilers are only a touchdown down. There's still time to play. Let's go back to the vet and Dick Enberg. Boy, every Sunday is like a holiday, isn't it? For the football fan, an exciting game there. Chris Barr has not been able to hit the long-range field goal, but his reputation has been better than those statistics. But stuck in a final, Detroit Lions down 10-0 at Tampa Bay, rallied to beat the Buccaneers. That's a final. Detroit 24, Tampa Bay 10, a big win for Detroit. They're now 7-5 in that Central Division. The loss all but eliminates the Buccaneers. It's third and nine for Oakland. With two minutes left, the Raiders have the ball at their own 40-yard line. Chandler to the right, working on the rookie Young. And slotted right is Cliff Branch. Plunkett to Branch. Out of bounds and a first down at the 48-yard line of Philadelphia. Richard Blackmore made the tackle. And they went after Young again. You cannot count this Oakland Raider team out. They have a great deal of experience out there on that football team. With Bob Chandler at one receiver, Plunkett at the quarterback, with Cliff Branch at the other receiver, and a good offensive line, this is going to come right down to the wire, Dick. Bob, you're right. The, with Chester in there, too, between Branch and Chester. And Chandler, they have 142 touchdowns, just those three men. He has come around Henry Lawrence all day long. Good pressure up front. And Plunkett doesn't even see him. Has no idea he's coming. 13 years he's played. And to repeat, Bud Humphrey told me before the game, he's never had more fun playing football in the last two years with the Philadelphia Eagles. New England has defeated the Colts 47-21. was intended for Bob Chandler and Young had the better position and he's been picked on all day long the Philadelphia Eagles have tried Osteen and the Raiders have tried Roynell Young and they've both had great football games it comes down to this play in fourth down Dick oh this is great football two teams won 10 and 1 8 and 3 a six game winning streak a seven game winning streak this is the way it should be played not a lot of penalties just breaks here and there the Raiders, should they lose, would drop into a first-place tie with the Chargers. The Eagles, with a win, would stay two in front of Dallas. Derek Jensen is in the backfield for Oakland. He's in there to block. Plunkett. Young, great coverage on Chandler, and now it's down to one play for Oakland, fourth down. Both of these teams have been prepared beautifully, absolutely beautifully. It comes down to a minute and 12 seconds, three points difference. And Jim Plunkett, who has been magical since he took over six games ago for the Oakland Raiders, is going to have one last shot at it. It is fourth down and what, about 19 yards to go? No, it's more than that. It's closer to 21 than 19. Let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. This is Channel 4, KRON-TV, San Francisco. On fourth down and 21. Plunkett to Branch, incomplete! And it appears the Eagles have won their eighth in a row. This is 
is their best start since back in the late 1940s in the Steve Van Buren era when they won the NFL championship. They're about to go 11 and 1, and their defense, true to form, has been very tough. And a tremendous psychological lift for this football team. They have been accused of getting to 10 and 1 by playing very mediocre opponents. To this point, up to this game, their opponents with had records of 37 and 62. There are a lot of people around the country saying, yeah, they're 10 and 1. But they haven't played anybody. Like They've it. certainly proven otherwise today. Excuse me, Bob. I wanted to point out that score. 28-13. Buffalo beats Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh's lost. Houston is losing but trying to rally. What that really sets up a big game on NBC next Sunday. Right into the line. And the Raiders will use one of their timeouts here to stop the clock at 58 seconds. That's a 4 o'clock Eastern time a week from today. Cleveland at Houston. And Cleveland won today, or was winning today. Oh, will that be a game? So the ball at the 40-yard line. The Raiders do have two more timeouts left. It's conceivable they'll get a chance at a final desperation pass or two. Most of the fans upstairs don't think so as the seats begin to empty. 68,000, 535, a sellout today. There were a few thousand no-shows. Folks seem to be content that Philadelphia has this one in the bank. Dick, have you, uh, we set this game up as uh, the tale of two quarterbacks. Have you ever seen a better defensive game in the last three or four years? It's the kind of play that you see in the in the uh, extra uh, innings, the uh, overtime, right. the uh, playoffs, on to the Super Bowl. Another update. Oh, my, look at that. Houston down 21 nothing, and I believe in the fourth quarter they were down 21 nothing. The Oilers have scored three touchdowns to tie the Jets. Houston, what? <laughs> Bum Phillips. He might have worn out a couple of those uh, elephant ear <laughs> cowboy boots is today. <laughs> I want to thank our spotters, Bill Friel and Paul Giordano. A fine job, Joe Costanzer, statistician. Downstairs, Ted Nathanson and George Finkel calling the shots. Second down play. Montgomery, middle of the line. Wrapped up shy of the 35 yard line by Reggie Kinlaw. By winning today, the Eagles would guarantee a playoff spot at the very worst, even if they lost all the rest of their games, would be a wild card team as they have been the last two years. And we talked about their steady progression. Two years ago, they were beaten in the first round. Last year, they won the wild card spot, beating the Bears, and then they lost to Tampa Bay 24-17. Now, here's the Central Division as of the moment. Cleveland has won. Houston was losing. But boy, you talk about don't count your money too soon. The Oilers haven't given up, and in fact, they're at least in a tie now. Pittsburgh has lost. Cincinnati lost to Cleveland. The Steeler defeat would only hurt uh, seriously should Houston win because they'd still be in. But if Houston wins, then the, the Steelers really are in deep trouble. Yeah, I was going to say, Dick, does it not mean that if uh, the Oilers win and Pittsburgh loses, that for the first time in a long time, we're not going to have the Steelers in the playoffs? I think that's true because of the winning records of the teams in the AFC West. Tough to get a wild card for the Steelers. Meanwhile, third and four, a first down would wrap it up for the Eagles. Raiders have only one timeout left. Montgomery tripped up. Mike Davis blitzed through and tripped him up short of the first down. The last timeout exercised by Oakland. And 47 seconds remain. Of course, the clock will stop on change of possession, so Oakland will have a desperation shot at trying to get into field goal position. Gee, I'm not so sure I wouldn't just run this ball, Dick. Instead of punting it, there's, a, you know, Ted Hendricks has blocked 20 kicks, both field goals and punts, through his illustrious career. It's not without mentioning that anything can happen in this football game. Why wouldn't you just uh, run the ball, take your chances? Your defense has been terrific all day long. Well, Runniger's in punt formation. Ira Matthews back at the 10. The Raiders, some confusion defensively. Finally, Willie Jones goes off the field. We'll see if they go after the kick. Looks like they're getting all their big guns in there. Reggie Kinlaw, Hendricks is in there. They're definitely going after him. This is his ninth kick of the day. 10 to 7, Philadelphia leading. 47 seconds remaining. Hendricks lining up on the right side. They overload the defensive right side. Here they come. He gets it away neatly. And it's a good kick. Takes the Raider bounce. And Oakland will be 80 yards 
away on the touchback. 38 seconds left. And the Raiders do not have a timeout. Well, a scoreless first half. A 51-yard field goal is now the difference in the game. Franklin hitting from 51. Remember, Chris Barr missed on a 45-yard attempt back in the first quarter. And in the fourth period, a electrifying bomb from Plunkett to Branch of 86 yards gave the Raiders a 7-3 lead, only to see the Eagles drive 71 yards in nine plays. And Wilbert Montgomery scoring on a sweep left from three yards out to give Philly the lead 10-7. If his man is tackled inbounds, he has no way to stop the clock. Incomplete. Derek Ramsey, well covered by Berge. Robinson was there, too. And had he caught the ball, he'd have been tackled inbounds. I don't think the way Berge had him shielded from the sidelines, he was thinking, I'm going to keep you inbounds. Go ahead and catch it. Philadelphia has done a great job defensively, stopping the passing game. With the exception of that one play to Cliff Branch for 86 yards, and I do think that was a, just a mental mistake by one of the defensive backs of the Eagles. They have played a super football game. We understand the New York Jets have just scored on a 45-yard run to take the lead against the Oilers. We'll have highlights on our post-game show, so stay right here on NBC. We'll be going there live. to 33. It's third and ten on the clock. The enemy of the Raiders. 26 seconds left. 28-21 the Jets after seeing the Oilers score three touchdowns to tie them. Ten to seven Philadelphia. 26 seconds left. The Raiders in a near impossible situation. They need a miracle play. before stepping out of bounds at the 38 with a first down. Not a bad call. Not a bad call. You mentioned uh, who they play next week. They play last Monday night, Sunday in travel, then go back home and play on Monday night. That is a tough schedule for the Oakland Raiders. And if they lose today, they make it tougher on themselves because Denver then figures they still have a chance in this race. There's the rest of the Raiders' schedule, and they have some tough spots, some chuck holes to... <laughs> to hit two before this season is over. And they played the Denver Broncos twice before this season is out. 18 seconds, all that Plunkett has to work with. He would just like to get within field goal range. That would be to about the Philadelphia 40 or inside. Down the sidelines. Incomplete. Bradshaw was out of bounds anyway, so even had he come back in and caught it, that would have been only a penalty. So Plunkett now has only 11 seconds. This is really it. He has to make a big gainer on this play to get within field goal range and have time to get the field goal team out. Gee, I don't know what I don't know what kind of play that is. That's when you want the coaches on the sideline, the guys with the headsets and the films and everything else and all the game plans in front of you to call the play. I can't imagine what it would be unless you throw it down the middle and hope for interference and the clock stops. That's the only way they're going to get a field goal in here. seconds left. They're hoping for a lucky bounce or an interference. They get neither, and now it's down to the final play. Where is R.C. Owens when you need him, Dick? <laughs> That's what that was designed, uh, reflective of those days when Owens would catch that alley-ooper, 49ers. But it's been victory and defeat, a marvelous demonstration of defense on both sides. The Raiders and Eagles indicating their 
high quality playoff aspirants and uh, the Eagles at home apparently have won it by three. Worth repeating too that the Eagles are now 11 and one with only one 300 yard passing performance by Ryan Jaworski and one 100 yard rushing performance by Wilbert Montgomery. They've won with defense. Fourth down. Up for grabs. Looking for a deflection. Defeat the Oakland Raiders 10 to 7. The Raiders' victory string is snapped at six. That's a fitting climax, too, Dick. As good a game as Jerry Robinson played all day, that he should end up with the interception that finally stops the Oakland Raiders' six-game winning streak. So Philadelphia, 11 and 1, leading the Cowboys by two, and a two-team race in the Eastern Division race. Meanwhile, we understand that the Jets-Oilers game is not finished yet. We'll be going live there to you. So stay right here on NBC. Had a wild one as the Jets had a 21-0 lead and the Oilers came back to tie with three touchdowns only to find the Jets going ahead on a late fourth quarter touchdown. And we're going to be switching to Shea Stadium shortly. Dick Enberg, Bob Trumpy in Philadelphia. We hope you've enjoyed this one. The Eagles defense is enough to win it. Philadelphia 10, the Raiders 7. Now to New York. Thanks, Marv. We're down here with more Jet fans. Mr. Michaels and his club have found a way to be 2-9 and nine, and it looks tough now. Yeah, it looks very tough. How about Michaels' job? Well, it looked tough for Jimmy Carter, too, but uh, we pulled through. I think Michaels might have the same results as Jimmy Carter. Jet fans love to be on TV, Marv. Back up to you in the booth for the next play. Yes, I notice. Third and two at the 37. Off the draw. First down picked up by Tim Wilson. Stan Blinka making the stop. The New York Jets with a 21-0 lead going into this fourth quarter. And it looked to be very, very dim for the Houston Oilers, particularly without Earl Campbell on the sideline with that bruised knee. But Ken Stabler able to bring the Oilers right back to tie the game at 21, capping it off with the long bomb to former Jet Richard Castor. However, the Jets bouncing back off the 45-yard touchdown pass play to Bruce Hopper. Here's Barber down to the 20. And he has the first down. Greg Buttle making the stop. Two minutes and 20 seconds. Remaining of this fourth quarter. And the Oilers with a steady march. They have a first down at the Jet 19-yard line. And Ken Stabler is now 31 for 49 for 362 yards. An exciting day of football here on NBC. Here in Philadelphia's Veterans Stadium, the Eagles have beaten the Raiders 10-7. A final and comment, Bob. this was the clinching touchdown by Wilbur Montgomery after an eight-play drive. Had put him ahead 9-7. They made the extra point 10-7. What a defensive struggle. Now, Philadelphia has won eight in a row and have lost only one of 12 games this year. And, of course, that Houston Jets game is not over. The Oilers are driving to possibly tie it and force it into overtime. We'll continue to update that game live, so stay tuned for the Budweiser NFL Report. A promotional fee has been paid to NBC by United Airlines. United serves more of this land than any other airline. That's what friendly skies are all about. When you want a great hotel that puts you in the center of things, let Sheraton put you there. Call 800-325-3535. This has been a presentation of NBC Sports. We're proud to bring you the best in sports television. Number 96, provocative, seductive, but is it legal? Here's the game show where the fun and excitement never stops. Watch the next all-time champ out with the dragon for unbelievable prizes on Tic-Tac-Toe. Weeknights at 7.30. taste the high country, no downstream beer will do. Coors is brewed with pure Rocky Mountain spring water and its own special high country barley. It's no downstream beer. It's no city beer. It's Coors. Taste the high country.
This is a rebuilt Toyota part. Looks just like the original. Guaranteed for 90 days or 4,000 miles, just like the original. Or your Northern California Toyota dealers will replace it free, just like the original. What's the difference? The rebuilt one saves you 25% or more. Join me for all the highlights tonight at 5. Out at Chase Stadium, 21-21 ball game. Just when it seems the Jets might lose it after leading 21-0. Richard Todd to Bruce Harper. Touchdown for the Jets. With less than three minutes remaining, the Jets move ahead of the Oilers by a score of 28-21. This is the Budweiser NFL Report. Brought to you by Budweiser. For all you do, this Bud's for you. Hello again, everyone. Brian Cumble. I'd like to welcome you back to our NFL 80 studios in New York. We're going to get you caught up on all that has happened on this 12th Sunday of the season. But for now, let's check in live. Shea Stadium, Marv Albert, Mike Hafner. And we welcome those of you who have joined us from around the country. I'm Marv Albert along with Mike Hafner. We have a minute 55 left in the fourth quarter. The Jets now lead the Houston Oilers 28 to 21 in a furious finish here at Chase Stadium. The Jets led 21 nothing going to the fourth quarter, but Stabler has brought the Oilers back. Touchdown passes to Mike Bomber, to White Shoes Johnson, and the bomb 68-yard pass to former Jet Richard Castor. However, the Jets came right back on a 45-yard touchdown. Richard Todd to Bruce Hopper. Right now, Stabler second and 21, and fires it. Inside the 10-yard line, Mike Bomber has picked up the first down. Tim Moresco making the stop on Bomber. And that's where Kenny Stabler had to go over the middle against the prevent defense. Second down in a bunch, and the master is something, Marvin. He has brought back his club from death, down 21 nothing, and they're knocking on the door inside the 10-yard line, first and goal to go, with a chance to tie this up and put it in overtime. 12-yard pickup for Stabler. Big game here for the Houston Oilers. Eight up and three down. Cleveland with the victory earlier at eight and four. Pittsburgh losing. So they are now seven up and five down. And Houston looking to maintain sole possession of first place. Kenny Stabler had an awful first three quarters. Marvin threw four interceptions. His club was down 21 nothing. Most quarterbacks are going to tank. They say, well, this game's over with. But not Kenny Stabler. He plays it one down at a time, and he's the coolest man on the field. But Stabler coming back strong in the second half. He now has completed for 385 yards, his best ever performance against the New York Jets. And he has once again found Mike Bobber to his liking. Bobber, off that last reception, now has caught 10 today for 54 on the season. 10 catches, 97 yards. Stabler has first and goal at the nine with a minute and 45 left in this fourth quarter. And here is Tim Wilson, who has done very well in taking over for Earl Campbell. Wilson stopped by the combination of Blinkham and Crosby. And a timeout is called by Houston, so they are down to one timeout left. And when we resume following the timeout, the Oilers will have second and goal at the five. The fans who just joined us missed one of the all-time cool plays by Kenny Stabler. They had 12 men on the field, Bum Phillips screaming for a timeout on fourth down and four at the goal line. All right, there's a minute 37 to play in that ball game. It's 28-21. We're not going to strand you. We'll make sure you know what happens in that one as we get to more scores and highlights right after this one. This bud's for everyone who serves us a hot one. Pops us a cold one. This bud's for you. For all you do, the king of beers is coming through. Yeah, just for you. That distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do. This bud's for you. Wet, sticky roll-on antiperspirants, they hold you up when you want to get dressed. Get on the stick. Speed Stick Solid Deodorant from Menon gives you dry, effective protection against perspiration odor. Look, roll-ons go on wet. 
That's why they stick to your shirt. But Speed Stick is solid deodorant, effective protection against odor, so dry that Speed Stick never sticks. And Speed Stick is so much wider than the other leading stick. Takes just a few strokes. So get on the wide stick. Speed Stick deodorant by Menon. Just at this very moment, Kenny Stabler has thrown a touchdown pass. It appears to Mike Barber, so pending the extra point, the Oilers will have caught the Jets at 28 with about a minute and a half left to go in that ball game. Okay, Sunday number 12, here's what has happened. Philadelphia has turned back the Raiders at Veterans Stadium. Final in that ball game, 10 to 7. The Eagles win, makes it their eighth straight, snaps the Raiders winning streak at six. Jim Plunkett, long distance, trailing 3 nothing, completes this one to Cliff Branch. He hesitates for a moment, takes it the rest of the way, 86 yards in all. The Raiders move in front by a score of 7-3. But this is the Eagles' kind of year. They're getting a lot of breaks and making a lot of them themselves. Watch this. Randy McClanahan has Jaworski in his sights but overruns it. Jaworski gets up, throws a pass, completes it to Leroy Harris, gets it in deep. And once in deep, these Eagles don't waste many opportunities. Warburg Montgomery from three yards out and the Eagles move in front and beat the Raiders. Final in that ball game, 10-7. The Jets score. We understand the point after is good, so now that ball game is tied at 28. We understand with about a minute and change left. Here's how it happened. Kenny Stabler looking left, looking right, and I believe this is Mike Barber who has find himself behind the coverage. Excuse me, this is the one that brought them to 21. This was the pass that tied it on. 21 all, a 68-yard strike to Rich Caster. This is not the final touchdown. Repeat, not the final touchdown that brought Houston even with the Jets at 28, but that is how it's stands right now in the fourth period with, as I said, a minute and change left to play. Pittsburgh against Buffalo. The Bills, a winner over the Steelers today, 28-13. to Bills stretch their record to 9-3, and three. and will the Steelers get one for the thumb? Well, they're 7-5 and five after 12 weeks. We could find out awful soon. 35,000 Steeler fans in the stands today. They watched on as the Steelers took a 7-0 lead, but then saw Joe Ferguson complete two touchdown strikes to Jerry Butler. First one was good for 29 yards to bring it even at 7. The next one was good for 10 yards to move Buffalo in front for 14-7. Move them in front for keeps. It was 14-10 at the intermission. And then in the third period, this was the game winner. The give here to Curtis Brown. Brown finding some running room around the left side. And then this is the key move. Cuts back across the grain, takes it 34 yards in all. And the veteran from out of Missouri helps push the Bills into a win over the Steelers. Final again in that ball game, Buffalo 28, Steelers 13. The Bills continue to lead by a game in the AFC East. We'll get caught up on the rest of the scores and highlights right after we come back from this word from Buffalo. Hey, make a love life for the winning team, okay? You guys should do that for us. <laughs> But a bunch of guys really go at it this hard just for a beer? Well, consider it's Michelob Light, and that means a rich, smooth taste you can compare to any beer you like. You guys never played like that before. Hey, we never played for a Michelob Light before. Michelob Light. Compare the taste. <laughs> when we at Craco build a car stereo, we never know who's going to be in the driver's seat. Every Craco car stereo is tested to meet the toughest quality standards. And that means you can be sure that your Craco car stereo will perform, no matter what your listening habits are. Down the road, you'll be glad it's a Craco. That wild ball game that's been going on at Shea at right now, as you can see, it is tied at 28 with just 1.16 left to play. The Oilers came back from a 21-0 deficit, but now it's 28 all. Let's go to Shea. Marv Albert and Mike Hafner live. And again, we welcome people from across the nation. Marv Albert, Mike Hafner from Shea Stadium, Richard Todd scrimmage at midfield Jesse Baker and Andy Doris of Houston doing the damage the New York Jets took a 21 nothing lead into the fourth quarter Ken Stabler brought the Oilers right back Jets have now called for time Richard Caster on a 68 yard bomb to cap it off for the third touchdown of the fourth quarter thrown by Stable with a tie to 21. The Jets came right back to take the lead and then Caster catching another touchdown pass for Stable to put it where it is right here. 
Okay, so it's tied at 28 all. I understand we have racked up the correct touchdown, the one that brought the Oilers into a tie with the Jets at 28. Stabler's already completed three, two touchdown passes of six yards today. Look at this one. Behind the coverage, that is Caster, and you don't think he loves that. He is an ex-Jet. He had some problems with Walt Michaels and the rest of the Jets, and Caster scores his second touchdown, the one, the third touchdown for the Oilers, and the fourth touchdown for the Oilers. It's tied at 28. Other scores today, Cincinnati against Cleveland. Well, we understand New England, Baltimore is the first one up. Patriots, a winner over the Colts today, 47-21. It ends a two-game losing streak for the Patriots, who had lost three of their last four. Matt Cavanaugh started that ball game, went the entire distance. Don Calhoun over 100 yards rushing, as was Curtis Dickey in a losing cause. Final again, 47-21. As noted, Jets against the Oilers out at Shea Stadium, all tied at 28. So we move on. Cleveland against Cincinnati. The Browns, a winner over the Bengals by a score of 31-7. Four touchdown passes for Brian Seip, giving him 25 on the year. He is the AFC's leading passer. And should the Jets manage to turn back the Oilers, the Browns would be tied with the Oilers for first place in the AFC Central. And of course, those two teams meet next week right here on NBC. Chicago against Atlanta. The Falcon winning streak is now six games because Atlanta plays playing at Fulton County Stadium. Turn back the Bears by a score of 28-17. Bears playoffs hopes are done. They're 4-8. Falcons are 9-3. Detroit beat, beat Tampa Bay 24-10. St. Louis is leading KC 13-7. Green Bay out in front of Minnesota 16-13 in the third. We'll be back. For all the people who make the sidelines a part of the show, this buds for you. Buds for you. There's no one else who does it quite the way you do. So here's to you. You know it is. It's only what you say. It's what you do. It's for you. This buds for you. Just for you, that distinctively clean, crisp taste. 